Listen. My fortune. What do we have, Captain? We have land, Mr. Murray. Hello everyone! With Lumen, Unreal Engine 5 is all in on fully dynamic global illumination and reflections, which means you can forget about multi-hour lighting builds and instead focus on creating more lively worlds. The engineering team breaks down global illumination, surface caching, performance, and more about Lumen at unrealengine.com feed. Read up and become enlightened on Lumen. Speaking of lighting, if you're looking to show off your real-time abilities, then the Unreal Challenge Better Light Than Never is the perfect opportunity to do so. Participants have until June 26 to submit a short video entry demonstrating their skills for a chance to win up to $1,000 in cash prizes and more. Visit the Unreal Challenge form announcement post for complete details. Open your hearts to the last skulk of foxes in Hero Beat Studios' stylized 3D side-scroller Endling, which permeates the team's passion for environmentalism and animal rights. Hero Beat's founder shared what the studio hopes to achieve with their first title and why their founding principles are so important to the Spain-based team. Discover their story on the feed. Want to test drive new UE5 features on your existing automotive projects? We've optimized our automotive content on the Marketplace for use with key features like Lumen, Nanite, and Path Tracing. Head to the Unreal Marketplace to give them a spin. Could we soon be living in a world without collisions? Volvo Cars sure hope so, and they are working on everything from automation to the dash to make that world a reality. Steer over to the feed to see how sensor technology and a new Unreal Engine-based HMI is supporting this aim. And on that note, we'd like to congratulate the finalists of the Unreal Engine HMI Design Challenge. Maybe you'll be utilizing their designs in your vehicle one day. Pop over to Car Design News' announcement to see all the dashing finalists. 
Leading the charge into this week's spotlights is Golden Moon Games' Chronicle of Forgotten Times, Pawn of the Gods. The new single-player action RPG sends you, a bright knight, on an adventure to determine the fate of the Kingdom of Iberia. Download the demo today on Steam. While studying at Think Tank, Alex Lorente put together this outstanding indoor circus environment based on a concept by Yari Lute. They've built the majority of the scene from scratch with a little help for various props. Go over to Alex's art station page to let them know how awesome this scene is. From Blue Isle Studios, Leap is a fast-paced multiplayer first-person shooter featuring epic battles with up to 60 players, each armed to the teeth. Become an elite leap mercenary as you soar into battle, fight for either the United Earth Defense Coalition or the Rebel Exoterrans. Whoever pays the most wins your trigger finger and excessive arsenal. Leap into the game, now available on Steam. Thanks for watching this week's news and community spotlight. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Inside Unreal, a weekly show where we learn, explore, and celebrate everything Unreal. I am your host, Tina, and first of all, happy Pride, everyone, as well as we have a quick announcement on our side. We have the lighting challenge that is currently going on. Make sure you go check that out. Uh, we had a live stream about it last week. Make sure you go check that out, learn a little bit more about the rules, and get up on some tips and tricks. But without further ado, let's focus on this incredible series of guests that we have here today. First, I'm going to hand it over to Grace so she can kind of get us kickstarted here, but I'm excited to get the show going for y'all. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tina. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to be here. I'm Grace. I'm the Senior Product Manager for Audio on the Unreal Engine team. Um, I'm joined today by our Audio Engine Director, Aaron McLaren, our Senior Technical Audio Designer, Dan Reynolds, and of course, our special guest, Rich Vreeland. Um, as part of the UE5 release, we released Lyra, which is a starter game that we designed as a learning resource to help users like you on the stream today understand the frameworks of UE5. We knew this would be a really spectacular place where we could show users what they could do with Metasounds, and we dreamed really big for this one and invited one of the best composers we could find who we thought could really make something that would immerse our users into that Lyra environment. Um, we're so fortunate that we found Rich to help us with all of this. Uh, Rich creates music and sound under the name Disaster Piece and has worked on games such as Fez, Hyperlight, Drifter, Mini Metro, as well as Mini Motorways. Um, so without further ado, like Rich, tell us the story of how you got involved in this project. Yeah, um, I, think, um, I think Aaron had uh, come across my work maybe on Mini Metro. Is that right, Aaron? Uh, I think Fez was the first time I was Fez? like, well, I just was like, oh my gosh, the audio in this game is amazing. And then I looked you up and then I started listening to your soundtracks. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but yeah, Mini Metro came out and I was surprised. I was like, oh, that's, that's rich. Or sorry, disaster I, piece. I'm not even then, sure that we actually communicated though, until I started working uh -oh. on Solar Ash. Um, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think you Solar stopped Ash. by a GDC booth one year, I think. Okay, the GD and, and Solar Ash was done in Unreal Engine in the previous version in yeah. Unreal Engine 4. And yeah. um, so uh, as I was working on that project, I, I reached out to you guys um, at various times just with questions. And yep. um, we sort of started a correspondence. Um, you guys built some DSP for for us on that project. Yeah. And and uh, and uh, yeah, we just kind of became friendly and talked about you, working together on something at some point. I think uh, Metasounds in early access came out and I think you DM'd me, you're like, hey man, is there any uh, like uh, chance I could work with you guys on met something with Metasounds? I was like, actually, <laughs> actually, I think there is an opportunity. <laughs> you may have put that seed in my brain at some I point. May have. Like, <laughs> you know, let me follow up on this seed, that would be good. I, pl I plant <clears throat> seeds in lots of places and sometimes they grow into things. <laughs> So yeah, that's pretty much the story, I think, of uh, how I got yeah. involved. Yeah. Awesome. So we have a lot of time. We're going to be able to do a deeper dive and kind of look at what was built and how you approached everything. But um, I say, let's turn it over and jump into the demo. Um, you know, I think it'd be great for the people on the stream to first see a playthrough of that experience that you've created for us. Um, and then we can do a deeper dive into each one of those parts. Um, 
I could pass it over maybe to Dan if you want to drive and kind sure. of walk us through that experience. And no pressure. I also, We're all watching you play, so no pressure. I'll, <laughs> yeah. I also think maybe because Dan, so Grace and I were on the live stream last week and we gave kind of deeper intros to ourselves. So if you want to check out that live stream, we talked about ourselves probably too much. Uh, but Dan is new. He's not, we've, he's been on the live stream before, but maybe to a lot of people tuning in, they may not know Dan. But Dan, if you want to do a quick intro of yourself also before you. Uh, yeah, in. sure. I'll try to keep it very concise. I, <laughs> hello, my name is Dan Reynolds. I am a senior technical audio designer embedded with the audio engine team here at Unreal. And uh, my role is sort of like a uh, consultant slash first user slash prototyper. And I work also on a lot of um, special and advanced projects uh, that come come by, sometimes internal projects, sometimes weird stuff that Fortnite's doing. Um, yep. So just kind of all over the place as a sort of expert in the uh, latest uh, features of the Unreal Engine. He, I've he, been he's also awesome. Oh, sorry. I was going to say you're also really active in the social media community. So you might see him on Discord and things like that. Yeah. Uh, yes. I, I try to answer questions uh, and be helpful. And uh, it is a burden of my nature. <laughs> I've been working in games since uh, 2005 and freelanced most of it. And then um, I've been at Epic for about five uh, plus years, something like that. I don't know how long. Five, six years, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So that's that's quick intro. So he'll um, be do he'll be driving the Lyra demo for us. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, so if you're uh, opening up uh, Lyra for the first time, you might see this uh, map, uh, which is part of the uh, maps and modes like editor starter map. But uh, if you want to play the experience, uh, find your content browser, and then you can search uh, front end. And there's a, uh, a level called Lyra, L underscore Lyra front end. And if you uh, double click on that, it will load up. And uh, this will basically bring you to the, uh, the menu experience. And uh, this is also uh, what uh, what loads up when you um, package the game as like the starter map. Cool. And then um, if you hit the play, then you'll be greeted with the uh, Lyra menu. And um, we try to make a lot of cool. I, one of the things that uh, we try to do with this uh, is really flesh out the audio options. So if you go to the options menu in audio, there's a lot of uh, different ways that you might someone might configure audio in their game. And so this is a good example of that. Maybe turn down the music a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Turn down the That's music. fine. I'll allow it. <laughs> Not Notice, by the way, it's dynamic. It's uh, dynamic, yeah. So in the in in Fortnite, I think it does. It's not them. You have to click apply, to, like, but it's apply. not a limitation of the engine. No, no, that this is this is a, a difference in how Fortnite yeah. uses an older mixing system, and yeah. uh, we use the new the new hotness here. So the new hotness. The new hotness. Yeah. So yeah, and then um, if you go uh, to the play Lyra, uh, you can hit quick play to to be impatient, and it will randomly but, uh, load one of the two experiences. Yeah, One thing just... to point, highlight is that this music is totally procedural playing right now. Yeah, so the music that's playing is procedural, um, and uh, not, and now I have to, now I have to concentrate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so all of the audio in Lyra is implemented with meta sounds. Importantly. Yeah, yeah, we use no sound cues as something that uh, I definitely wanted to make sure we were using all sort of future-facing tech. And uh, the other thing is a lot of audio is actually synth synthesized. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of, there's a, yeah, there's a good, healthy variety of synthesized and sampled audio. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that sort of, that sort of comes through. The aesthetic, the the sort of futuristic aesthetic, kind of let, let us have a lot of freedom, yeah. which was nice. Um, one thing that uh, 
you may notice is that um, the music becomes more or less active depending on how active I am as a player. So in a way the music makes way for the action, which is very cool. Nice. Um, anything and then else you want to show before we start looking at stuff? Yeah, this is just a sort of how it sounds, so when you get a deep dive, you'll understand its context. Yeah. So I think um, probably one thing to highlight is the ambience uh, zones, how you did your reverb, and although this isn't the focus uh, on a lot of that stuff, but just highlighting that it's all native audio. It's... Yes. Yeah, uh, uh, we can definitely... Uh... This 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 map probably doesn't showcase the reverb as much as the uh, other map. The other map is uh, in interior. There's two. There's two Lyra maps. Yeah. So if you wanted to, um, one of the cool things that we've implemented here is escape. Actually, gives you the, the true game option escape. So you can either play, uh, stop the play, and editor, or you can go to options. Normal pause. Um, in my case, I actually just want to quit the game and go back to the main menu. And pick the other map. Yep, and you can hear that we've returned to the sort of main theme. And then if and I go to... The meta sound that's running is continuous. So the meta yeah, sound is yeah. getting just, those state changes. The, the music is one meta sound uh, that's playing in the, in the yeah. background. I will say the intent with the music was for, like Dan was saying, was for the music to kind of become more sparse as the action picks up. Um, it actually sounds like maybe the music is is a little more active than uh, it was designed to be. Um, so that might be something to, to look at, but um, yeah, the it, everything sort of lives in a single system and, and yeah. it persists across um, the levels and the menu yeah. and so forth. Well, w one thing uh, to point out too is that Lyra is a live game. In other words, it, it it's not gonna be done. It's basically constantly gonna be working on it. and they have been working on it since it even shipped and Dan is running a latest version of Lyra on the release, the yeah. next, basically 5.1 branch. Um, no, actually, no, this is this, no, this no, is, this five, is release this five, is, this is 5.0.3. 5. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but anyways, it, it's, it is constantly being worked on. So it could be that because it's procedural music, some, some kind of data has shifted on what's feeding it. So it may slightly change over time. So we'll have to bring it back in rich to do different <laughs> versions. Yeah, and they'll they'll add new map modes, new game modes to it, and stuff like that. So we plan on Lyra being our sort of place to showcase the latest and greatest, and we'll probably have to update things and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So it'll be a good thing to keep an eye on through the years through five point uh, through UE five. It's basically if if you remember shooter game in UE four, Lyra is the new shooter game, and we are trying uh, to except on purpose, it, very on purpose. Yeah, and. Yeah. Uh, so one of the things yeah. that uh, we discovered over time is that uh, a lot of companies, studios, used Shooter Game as the starter yes. project for their own yes. game. And, uh, and yeah, I'm already hearing that that's already starting with Lyra. <laughs> and, uh, and copy uh, my game. We, we had not. We had not actually. I don't think this was intentional because Shooter Game for us internally is more like a test to make sure yeah. when we have a new engine version that we don't break old content. Yeah. And so Shooter Game, aside from our update in 425, where we up we overhauled the audio, yeah. Yeah. was basically unchanged, unchanged. since yeah. like I don't know its initial release. So it's not ex actually a good example of UE4 features. Yeah. Um, it's, it's like UE4.0 features. It's like a t <laughs> it's like oh, cracking open a time capsule, you know, from 2014 yeah. or something like that. And so, um, so yeah, so it's. So Lyra is intentionally meant to be a, a, a kickoff for your own game project. And so we approached it from that angle to try to showcase um, the, yep. the sort of latest way of doing things. Um, and we expect it fully to change over time. Yeah. So. And hopefully we won't break your stuff, Rich, but we might. Yeah. No, it's fine. <laughs> we might re-implement it, you know? Well, but yeah. we might end up re-implementing it because there there's already some better techniques that we'll talk about. That yeah, you might need to. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I just mean like there, as Meta Sounds comes up with more features, certain approaches will be easier. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, UX things like that. So we want to showcase that. Um, yeah. Should we we'll talk about how long the project took? Oh yeah, that's a good idea. So um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, many of you 
uh, out there in the wider world might have heard of the Matrix Awakens demo that we released on Next What is Conference. that? <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, I'm kind of a, the only person um, uh, on, that's in-house doing, doing the, that work. Uh, we've used a lot of contractors, in fact. Yep. Um, aside from uh, uh, audio producer uh, Noah Landis uh, on the the uh, previous project uh, and some on um, Matrix Awakens and some assistance that we stole from Fortnite. <laughs> we actually stole resources some people from Fortnite, like sneakily, like can you work on this for a couple weeks, kind of thing. Yep. Um, it, uh, aside from that, all, almost all outsourced work. So, um, so can Lyra you, was. Would you, can you stop the game, by the way? Oh yeah. Uh, stop playing under. Sorry, oh, just sure music is distracting my brain. <laughs> it's good music. It was good music. I'm just I was too listening much of, to it. Too much of a good thing is a bad thing. Exactly. <laughs> Anyways, so so <clears throat> Matrix so, Awakens. Yeah, yeah. So Project Lyra, um, Matrix Awakens was a huge effort. Uh, so a lot of the resources that would go to Project Lyra were working on that. Um, so um, we didn't really get started until uh, basically the, the January, um, and. Uh, we had Rich, uh, I think he was onboarded by at least a couple weeks into January. Um, yeah. But uh, we also had, uh, we hired uh, Sweet Justice, um, and a uh, sound designer from Sweet Justice and a technical sound designer uh, from Sweet Justice to work with us. Um, that's Chris Sweetman and uh, Gustav Rathman. And... Um, uh, they probably got uh, Chris was able to start working right away, but I think Gustav didn't get onboarded until a little bit later. I don't remember exactly when, but it's probably February or something like that. So we had a pretty short timeline um, in terms of uh, how, how long total do you think in terms of audio content did you put in Delirium? Like, like well, was it a I month, had a month of work. Well, I had started uh, prototyping um, in the early days of January in the, in anticipation of. Uh, of Gustav uh, onboarding and and, uh, and Sweet Justice, uh, so there's some guns in gun designs in Lyra that actually aren't used. Those are my prototypes, um, but uh, I think our deadline. Well, our deadlines were probably deadlines are tough here. Uh, <laughs> they kind of yeah. they kind of slip around a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, we had the hard the hard date of the the ue5 release date and we, yeah. we had to make sure that it went through a qa process and all that sort of stuff yeah, yeah. so you have to walk backwards from there yeah um, it's about so I, I think it's about like, a month month and a half, month and a half. maybe yeah. month and a half yeah, yeah that's probably about right um and that's relevant because if you if you check out lyra you can see it's pretty fully featured in terms of audio implementation and it was done relatively quickly uh, by a small team so yeah that's, that's somewhat useful for people but also on a on a more like robust kind of project, you know, there'd be room for further development of some of these ideas. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah for a, sure. That's a, <laughs> that's one of the things that uh, is a little bit difficult on these sorts of projects. We have that on all of our demo projects, unfortunately. Yeah. There's not a lot of time for uh, revisiting implementations if we have better ideas later on. It's it's yeah. usually like we get one one pass and that's about it. And they're often while the, the it's like the train running while you're putting the tracks in front yeah, of it. Yeah, that's that's a really good, important thing, sort of distinction that, that uh, probably a lot of our uh, licensees aren't don't completely um, uh, appreciate is that when we're working on projects like these, demonstrating a particular feature, the feature itself is a work in progress. <laughs> So yeah. <laughs> sometimes we're like th there are days when you're like, oh, that particular part of the feature I can't use because it's it's broken right now. Yeah. Uh, and Dan, yeah. that's one of Dan's <laughs> unique abilities is like just rolling with it. Uh, sometimes too, too yeah, good at I'm, it. But he'll I, he'll be like, hey, everybody, this is broken, but that's okay. I've got this crazy workaround, and we're like, oh, let's don't do that workaround. <laughs> He's true. like, that's, that's all right. I'm unblocked. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That is actually a a, fo a foil of mine is that I uh, keep on. I'm I, I work around a lot of things when it's like uh, in Apollo 11 or, or Apollo 13, which is Apollo 13. Uh, Apollo 13. Where you know they get the square thing into around. around. That's yeah. just sort of like Dan's daily life. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> true, yeah. 
except, <laughs> except my life's not on the line. That's the difference. I don't that's there's a very big difference. I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> it's just toys put, it, put a little games. bit perspective. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is something I remind myself often that it is a toy. Yes. It's, it's, so, yeah, we're making we're stuff making for games. Enterta- uh, it's entertainment. Entertainment. <laughs> good perspective <laughs> anyways let's let's jump into some stuff I, i'd say yeah yeah yeah. uh shall we take a look at the uh music system sure yeah all right so if we go into content audio and we get rid of my little search term um we can find our meta sounds directory by the way and... before we jump into it it's important yeah. to look at the way dan organized uh it, sort of all of the audio assets i think there's more than one way that one could organize their assets, but it's important uh, when you start a project to ahead of time think about how you want your assets organized. Yeah. And this is probably a good thing to look at as a as a potential model for your own projects. Yeah, I'm actually bugged by this guy. Why is <laughs> yeah, why is that there? <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I tr- I I I try to set this, especially because I work with contractors um, yeah. who will be jumping in. I try to set up a uh, sort of a skeleton infrastructure. It doesn't always work out. Sometimes you get this where you have sounds and sound waves. Yeah. yeah. Whoops. <laughs> what do you What do you think about What do you think about organizing by like the asset type versus organizing by like like a feature? I think it depends on. Um, I think it depends on your discipline in terms of uh, your like infrastructure so like for example yeah. on paragon all yeah. of the all of the like ho- folder character. hierarchies yeah. were character driven so yep. you mm. you could basically take the folder of a character and it would contain all of its relevant content and i think that's actually yep. a really great way to organize yep. content um the but the on the other hand you have to sort of and there uh, and there was consistency between characters so it'd be like you, you, yeah audio so the, and then you'd break it up into those things within that character the, right. All the all the folder hierarchies were identical, so that was that's real, that consistency is really important if you want to go that approach. Mm-hmm. With uh, but with audio, you have to also appreciate that there are um, asset types that are part of like a singleton portion of the audio engine or a feature yeah. that, yep. like for this, for example, the sub like graph, right? Yep. Um, and so th- those I would probably still want to organize yep. by. Um, by either type or function, you can do function. Yep. I think that would yeah. be fine. Yeah, cool. It's just something to point out when you look at it's these projects. Part of the point of Lyra is to show this yeah. type of yeah, stuff. Yeah, because it's and, something that I always kind of wrestle with when I start a yes, project. It's, is like, what's going to be the deal. best? <laughs> yes. Yeah, it is a yeah, big deal. I totally agree. Now, one thing that that is important to appreciate is that our sample content team really likes to have this old idea of prefixes on your types. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, like for example, oh, well, this was that's that was like the literally the worst name. <laughs> <laughs> the one example that it wasn't the, the case. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, oh. not there either. Yeah, that's, that's here we go. Times they, they, okay, I got some B's uh, there. Okay, B uh, B <laughs> underscore. Yeah. Look, sometimes when you're, sometimes the best. This is actually something we said often. Uh, sometimes the best practice, because we're trying to be, make best, best practice decisions here. Sometimes the best practice, most of the time the best practice, is whatever ships, whatever gets yeah. the ship. <laughs> okay? Whatever we may say is the best approach. If you have to do something that is really yeah. hacky, but it gets it a ship. That's the best it's, That's it's, the best practice. It's literally the best thing you could have done. <laughs> So, <laughs> like, it's important. Uh, we we are game devs, and so, like, you know, truly, Epic is made of game devs, and so sometimes yes. you'll see some weird shit, like stuff you, you like hack, and you're like, "What are they thinking?" It's like, "Why did they do well, that?" We were somebody was probably up late trying to re- hit a deadline, but it works, right? <laughs> but it works, and it chips. So, <laughs> the same thing. And there were some. There were actually some deep questions that uh, I had to encounter when trying to answer that question, what is the best practice for this particular yeah. process? And realizing sometimes there wasn't a best practice. Yeah. Um, and that we had to like kind of come up with one. Um, and that actually has prompted questions, uh, you know, yeah. in other, you know, in other conversations outside of Project yeah. Lyra where, where yeah. we are sort of like, hey, we, we actually need to solve yes. this problem. Yeah, yeah. 
um, and we need to get together to do it. Uh, and so that's sometimes also a difficult thing. There's sometimes problems that have to be solved between with multiple teams coming together. Yeah. And a lot of teams at Epic, a lot of the sort of departments at Epic have a lot of autonomy over their vision. Yeah. Of, what what features look like yeah. and that sort of thing. Yeah. Sometimes you'll see redundancy between features between different yeah. departments, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so yeah, I think Lyra was a good. It was a good sort of medicine project for us <laughs> yeah. uh, internally, as much as uh, as it was to try to put something out there that was that served that purpose. All right, let's uh, let's see some medicines. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So um, these. These darker green meta sounds are uh, meta sound graphs. Okay, so they're they are not source audio. They are custom meta sound nodes that um, the designers uh, made for um, purposes, yeah. which we'll, we can get into uh, as we start exploring. The these are system. these ones with the lib underscore are mostly yeah. the ones that I made, and they're they're like generic um, reusable utilities. Yeah, like like a function would be that you would reuse, like whether it's you know doing random randomizing stereo yep. panning or, yep. uh, as an example. Or important here is to underscore for people who aren't familiar with MetaSounds is that uh, MetaSounds supports composition. In other words, you can have MetaSounds within MetaSounds. Yep. And this right here uh, is we're gonna probably rename it. Um, what was the the rename that we all agreed on? Was it MetaSound? MetaSound graph. Patch. I think is patch. patch. Oh, okay. We were going to call it MetaSound Patch. Right. I think it's what we internally. So, anyways, in the future versions, you might see this as MetaSound Patch. And the idea is that it's not itself a thing that you can play in the level as a sound wave, but intended to be a, a patch or a sub patch within a MetaSound graph. Because uh, it's just calling it MetaSound is confusing. Uh, so. Yeah. <laughs> MetaSounds are still. <laughs> Go on. I was going to say for the people on the stream, let us know what you think. This is a great yeah. opportunity for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. If you have an it's idea for what to one. call that, let us know. <laughs> We're pretty open to <laughs> yeah. ideas here. And so endlessly ahead. debating names of things. So if you have, if you're like, this should be called this, and then let us. If you have a good argument, that'd be great to hear. Um, <laughs> all right, so let's let's uh, check one out. Yeah, yeah. So let's take a look at the. Uh, so so oh, first of all. Um, MX is the prefix for music. Yeah, yeah, that's my naming scheme. MX is the prefix for music. Uh, I like to name. Uh, I like uh, prefixes, which def which define function. Um, so, and then SFX is for a sound. So MX underscore system is the uh, the big. Oh, we've got that. Looks like the mega a little. Looks like things got a little messy. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yep. 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 I should have taken a look at this before the stream. This, is, um, this, this is... might be a good time to point out that there's a there's an article um, that has screenshots <laughs> of these that are a little yeah, neater if you yeah, want to yeah, yeah. follow along and take a that... look. <laughs> <laughs> there was a bug uh, that made triggers pick one uh, instead of multiple. There, you can have um, uh, triggers, your inputs, uh, you can have multiple instances of the same in input, um, but there was a bug which revised the graphs to make all connections go to one input, which creates this sort of spaghetti thing going on here. So that's what oh. that's what's gone. How that's would what's you untangle here. this? Well, uh, you have to reconnect it to the old triggers. Or you say that maybe if you reload it or is that no there's there's nothing we can no. do this is how it's been saved i see so um so i would have to i assure you it was it was neat at one time yeah we can, uh, <laughs> we'll blame rob rob on this one i think it was... <laughs> yeah 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 what is uh well, we I actually stuff. love this personally. Yeah. I feel like this really shows <laughs> <laughs> what the true chaos is of working with these notes. <laughs> yeah, we, well, we lovingly call. I've always lovingly called these noodles. Yeah, get the <laughs> spaghetti. <laughs> yeah, blueprint spaghetti. Okay, I think I see what's this is. What is this? <laughs> so there you go. You're you're figuring it out there. I think these these um. The triggers, I think, are what has changed, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, that's the the that's the bug. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. But anyway, this is this was the uh, this is the this is one of the sections of the music system that's just basically triggering clips for the menu. Um, so the the way the system is is kind of laid out is 
it's broken out into these different sections. Um, you know, there's sections for all the different states of the music. So there's, um, you know, the menu has two different states of music that it kind of goes back and forth between. There's kind of an initial state and then a loop and like a looping state. Um, then there's also there's also a few states during combat. There's there's stingers um, for when like you uh, when um, your team uh, captures a control point. Um, then there's uh, there's an ambient uh, state for the combat and 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 a sort of an up tempo state for the combat. And it initially, when I was kind of building the system and experimenting with it, I had the music kind of ramping up in intensity with the action, and uh, that actually uh, proved to be um, a little like distracting, and it was kind of getting in the way of a lot of the gun, a lot of the weapon fire. And so we sort of changed, kind of talked about it, and sort of changed the approach to kind of invert that. So the idea is that the music is. Um, the, the more that's going on in combat wise in, in a level, the less music there is. And so it, it just kind of like, it kind of fills in the gaps. Um, and when it's working well, it, it it's, it's kind of, um, you know, it's, it's not stepping on things too much and it's just kind of coming in and out when necessary. Um, and then, so, so there's like all the sections for the different, um, the different uh, um, states of the music. And then there's sort of like the there's the output stage and then there's sort of the input stage, which is where all the state management is done. And um, yeah, maybe we can look at that um, if we can ever, where do you want we ever get this? out of this. I'm just trying <laughs> to like, get out of this I'm just trying to clean hellscape. it up a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> appreciate it. It looks like some they, there was some shifting uh, across the graph, too. With yeah. The so there was also a bug with comments, comment boxes that also got fixed. Oh. Um. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, so this illustrates though that this is a real live project, yeah. um, you know. Yeah, but uh, you can see I, like the composition maybe as one example. Um, you can see that there's a lot of composition in this meta sound yes. graph because yes. without it, it would be even crazier than it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, so there's you know there's some reusable meta sounds that I put together for like um, you know playing clips, um, you know generating random stereo uh, like panning values and things like that. Um, yeah, we, yeah, that's when a, you see that's a, when you see the label in the in five point when you see the label is blue, that's a that's a custom node. And you can double click it. You and can double click it, it and it'll load up that yeah. node. And you can kind of see how it works, which is cool. So the what's interesting on and that you can though, nest you them go, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So if you double click on it, the the pins that show up here are the inputs and the outputs yeah. that the user defines. That's here. exactly right. Yeah. So you get input is a. We've got input called input, and then we have an output called on next and uh, pan R and yep. pan L. It's similar so to blueprints, it, but that's a little exactly bit different. Right. Yep. yep. So I mean, this whole this whole experience for me was was totally new, and it was uh, very experimental, um, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, there are definitely um, advantages to working this way, but there are also maybe some um, you know some scenarios where. You know, you, you could potentially do some of the music sequencing in, in blueprints, say, and then and then sort of right. like, um, you know, transfer over um, to, to meta sounds for the actual like actual playback. Um, so how, how was just sort of like uh, coming into meta sounds? You know, you say is experimental. Uh, how was the um, experience compared to other? methods of implementation you've used in the past you know like wh like yeah what because uh, you've you've done a lot of procedural uh music systems uh you've mm -hmm. designed a lot of different uh systems in, in a lot of i think a lot of different engines and contexts mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so uh what was it you know was was it difficult to get into it was it like how did you feel about you know starting in it like what was your sort of background in these kinds of yeah. Have you ever experienced anything like it before? You know, that sort of thing. So my background is primarily doing um, like just using text-based uh, code to, to, to create systems. So, um, uh, you know, like I, I don't have a ton of experience with like, with like modular gear. Um, and actually I think this system, you know, it, it sort of reminds me that as right. Reminds me of that as far as like the way that um, like audio and data passes through the system, um, it's hmm. it's a bit more like maybe like a modular system than even like Blueprint. Um, the Blueprints were 
Some. I wonder. Like, I wonder why my... that might be. By the way, look, look at <laughs> Dan and I's background. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the visual. My first real exposure to visual scripting was Blueprints, working on Solar Ash, and you know, yeah. built a lot of different um, systems for audio in Unreal Engine Four using Blueprints. Um, and so that was kind of my that was kind of my maybe my one of my bigger um, reference points for getting into meta sounds. Um, but meta sound, you know, there are there are like some differences with how um, you know things work in meta sounds, and uh, like like I said, where it's it's a little bit more similar to uh, to like a like modular, yep. like a modular synthesizer, um, in the way that you know data and everything is is passed. Um, it's probably uh, worth mentioning that MetaSounds is not a scripting language. Uh, so this isn't yeah. a huge. There, we've done some other live streams, by the way, talking sort of really deep dive on MetaSounds, MetaSound architecture. You know, if you're a programmer, I wrote a, a, a dev blog recently on write how to write a MetaSound node in C plus plus. It's all you know, plugins can extend it. And so it's, but it's important to point out that MetaSounds is not a scripting language. It's uh, it's a essentially a graph description language, and all this stuff is raw C plus plus. There's no uh, sort of bytecode layer that is getting interpreted. Like Blueprint has a runtime, for example. This is executing C plus plus code, so it's native out of the box. Um, and uh, it's, I would say not accidental that it's like modular uh, in the sense that that is in fact the best way to do audio signal processing is this sort of flow graph because audio is exactly like flows like wa like water you know you can think of a buffers and data just flowing so it's directed acyclical graph there's lots of precedence in audio for this i mean besides hardware gear there's other uh languages that have been visual for 20 years now, like Maximus P, there's PD, there's these other languages that are out there. I wouldn't call them languages, but environments yeah. that are like that. And so there is precedence for this. And it's important though to make that distinction because there's some things that probably ought to be done in scripting, in a scripting environment. Um, like even, even in modular yeah. synth, like I have fun doing stuff and I love procedural music too. And I, I start, I'm like, I wish I could just sit down and write some scripts and then have that control my modular gear. <laughs> Because it's, yeah. it's it's weird yeah. to think about your logic with flow graph kind of stuff. I think sometimes. the lot. I think the <laughs> logic portion of it, and you know, the yeah. triggering is is was probably the biggest pain point for me. Um, like overall, it was yep. it was really fun. Um, but some of the logic stuff, like especially the state management, yeah, um, exactly. doing doing that in a meta sound is is a little bit tricky. And I think yeah. um, I might have uh, I might have tried to do that in the blueprint if I had, if yes I had to do it over exactly. So a better approach rather than the sort of mega sound that handles everything and just gets data from the game a better approach may have been to break it up into smaller meta sounds and have your logic and blueprint yeah um there's because we you know triggers can be set from blueprint you know so you could build a system that and meta sounds can be played sample accurately through courts so you could imagine mm -hmm. having sounds meta sounds running using courts so that you can still maintain perfect timing and sample accuracy but you could have potentially broken it up. The problem with that approach, and I remember we had this conversation, Rich, early on, this is Dan reminded me of it recently, is that when you were starting, you're like, okay, should I just build one big meta sound or should I break it up? And it, there was like a deliberate thing and yeah. I suggested just making one big meta sound. You did. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the reason uh, was because we don't have yet a feature to support this. There, the meta sound editor is a playful environment it's fun to hear your whole music yeah, and be able to fun. change things live you know without having to go to the play and editor to hear and preview your music and so i felt like the results would probably be best if you were just able to hear everything and just have it in, be in front of you mm -hmm. in the future there is a flow that we would like to try to work to support where you can play multiple meta sounds at the same time within the meta sound mm. editor and then simulate blueprint inputs without having to actually yeah. run blueprint that actually having to go into play an editor if so you, you could build a multi meta sound system in the future we just don't have that feature yet if you actually look at the state management section of this um yeah. that's sort of that's sort of what i was talking about where the yeah the logic the logic in here is um yeah. it's different than how you would think about um managing state i think in like a in like blueprints or in code yeah. like it feels a little bit different than what i was used to and so figuring out how to actually yeah. move between the different states um, uh, in, in just in a MetaSound was, was like yeah. a little bit of a, of, a, of, a, of a galaxy brain kind of, you know, 
It's mind expanding. It's <laughs> still kind of interesting, so for, Rich. Do you want to? Actually, I'm kind of curious. I, I kind of I wanted you to walk walk me. What were you saying, Aaron? I, you you want well, I was just going to say, like in this particular thing about state management, this is exactly like wherever that B's menu is set in Blueprint, that could have been in Blueprint and then just played multiple sounds and then set you know, using chords so that things are perfectly timed. Like yeah. this should probably end more advanced stuff would be better in blueprint. So it's a, it's yeah. a great yeah. way to look at that. Yeah, that makes sense. Anyways, um, uh, to, this is the yeah, entry point on this play. Is, so we this is kind of about. interesting. Yeah, this is interesting to me. So uh, I'm sort of curious <laughs> what you've got here. It looks like um, you're, so you're getting uh, BPM seconds from a BPM value. And it looks like it's your BPM is a hundred BPM. Mm -hmm. But it's in and half notes. It's in half notes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, when it starts playing, this trigger is repeating every half note, basically. Is that right? Yeah. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, and then, uh, where is this set in the game? Do you remember? Um, I think it. I think there is. Uh, there are some blueprints for this. Um, I think there's a blueprint called Music System, Music Manager. Um, uh, and that's sort of doing some of the, um, the, the communication between, um, the different, uh, the different, um, experience, experience, uh, assets. Yeah. yeah. Where, where the, the music system, the music manager component is spawned at, uh, at the beginning of, um, uh, starting a level. So there's a base component. What's um, FE? that's. Front end, I think. Front end. Oh, yep. okay. Interesting. Did you write these blueprints, Bridge? I did. Yeah. Oh, cool. All right. I thought there were more, but them. <laughs> they might have got refactored or something. Um, okay. Yeah. So. So we have um, this. Here is the Bias menu. Yeah. If you want to search for that, we can see where that's popping up. Okay. And uh, we get that. And yeah. What events? Then we do stuff. What event is this called on? Is this called? By the on, way, this um, is a good example of showing how you hook up uh, meta sound parameters. So this is on tick, but I think the tick is is been dramatically reduced. The frame rate, the the oh, rate of the yeah. tick. I don't think it's being called. Um, no, it's every. It's oh tick. well, hot dang! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Uh, <laughs> it looks like it looks like you're validating the music system here, and then you're you're playing it. Just it looks like a this looks like a recovery. Uh, yeah, there's a bunch of validation setup. stuff going on to make sure that it's playing. Um, and then, uh, so if we, I guess if we move ahead, um, if it's not the oh, so there there's some parameter stuff that I'm doing in the music system. So actually, I'm I'm Having mapping. Yeah, yeah. The, I'm getting the look direction of the yeah. of the player, and I'm map, I'm actually using that to 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 drive um, the panning of some of the elements of the. Oh, cool! Oh, interesting. It was just sort of an experiment, um, <laughs> and that only happens when you're in gameplay, not in the menu. So that's that's uh, why that's branching up there. Um, and then this one down here is this like, is oh, intensity. so we're always sending combat intensity to the music system. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That one you definitely want to take. Yeah, so that's why so, this is on tick. It, so, uh, Dan, it's worth pointing out for people uh -huh. who haven't seen MetaSounds, the set float parameter and how that parameter system works. So, yeah, yeah, that's a good question. You so, can show where it pops in into yeah, the music Yeah, system. so so here's our music system. This is our... Um, so this is uh, the uh, Lookter input. Mm -hmm. So Look if we go... Whoops. Look, if we go to our uh, Lookter, there's the Lookter input. It's by name. And um, there it is. Yeah, if you double click the input, it'll take you to. Yep. So you can see it's driving some panning, I believe, of different sounds. Yeah. yeah one one left, interesting thing right. to highlight here is, node. is the, uh, <laughs> in terms of workflow, no programmer was involved with doing any of these hookups. Yeah. Like Rich was able to decide. What Just he wants me, to drive his music system. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, you could you could call making a meta sound and doing a blueprint script a programmer, but I mean, like, no native code was required to do this. This was all driven by an artist and his decisions. I mm -hmm. want to do this. I'm going to grab that data and I'm going to send it from Blueprint, and I did not have to be involved in it. 
I was not a bottleneck for his creativity. Only in Maybe other things were, but it, at least not directly a bottleneck. <laughs> oh, and then there's intensity uh, increases the trigger probability. Very interesting. And there's, there's so this input, uh, you can actually have multiple inputs on the graph of the same, the, the same input. So this, this knob with intensity slider uh, yeah. is, is, there's a couple of those in different places in the graph because the intensity is driving. It's, if you go down to the, out, I think the output mixing, yeah, it controls the uh, crossfade between the um, ambient uh, the ambient stage and the and the like the combat stage of, of music. Um, Very cool. And when, uh, when things are all audio uh, parameters, so yeah, left, you right, just... LR. So one thing to point out the the bug that made this uh, graph crazy is with triggers, where the trigger like he had those triggers referenced in multiple places, like he has this left, right, and all this kind of stuff yeah. for routing. It consolidated them. Yeah. So that up tempo used to be spread out everywhere so it's not as crazy like you you can actually yeah, have <laughs> like that could have just been one you know input so you wouldn't but anyway, the point is you can see it working on float parameters and other and audio parameters there and that's what the intention was and just do this yeah i love that. the for testing uh section you know i'm guessing this is where you iterate and tried out a few different things yeah. um did you actually Shipped. use that and try to? <laughs> is this yeah, no, I did. Um, if you yeah. if you even press play, it might even it might even work. Um, and if you oh yeah, this you, is your metronome. I remember crank you, up you, the metronome. You, that's the yeah. volume you'll hear. Your click. Oh, you used to be. Able you to might hear have that. to change. You might. I don't. I, it's not playing. I think. Uh, you might have to um, change the menu boolean to be false. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That might be why. Yeah, I can do that. And I guess was that something that you used um, while you were kind of testing and trying to figure out where to land? This was kind of one of the core parts of your workflow. Yeah, I mean it's not working right now, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it definitely I, used to. I remember playing. I was with that using metronome. it to just to test the triggering and make sure that um, you know all the assets were firing um, in the right place uh, because I you know the 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 music is made up of all these phrases um, and uh, those get triggered on half notes and sometimes they get triggered even um, I think sub like faster than that. Yep. Um, and I was hearing at times I was hearing like sounds that maybe weren't playing exactly on the beat. So I was like, oh, I should probably just create a metronome and this way I can make sure that, you know, if, you know, if we try to troubleshoot, whether it's a, a issue with the system or sometimes it's an issue with the asset, like I rendered out, um, you know, a, a percussion part or something and maybe, you know, maybe it's not yeah. starting directly right where it needs to and I need to adjust it. So things like that. Looks like the not menu music branch isn't working anymore here. Oh, um, it's probably some connection. Maybe, maybe when I was moving things around, I think. Um, oh, up tempo. I think sometimes when you what what calls when this you mess with the when you mess with the boolean, sometimes it kind of just dies. Okay. I'm what what calls sure. this trigger? Um, the state management section oh. um, has all the triggers, so you can see like. Um, this trigger is not uh, not menu. If it's not the menu, then one yeah. one feature we have in five point <laughs> one that we're working on, by the way, is visualization on events, so that you'll be able to see the triggers lighting up as they go. So this type of cool. problem where you're like, is this hitting? Is this triggering properly? Would be much easier to debug in uh, five point one. The other thing that we're adding a lot of is uh, control flow for triggers. Yep. So there's a lot more yep. than just that would... do these trigger once is they're kind of yeah yeah there's gonna be a bunch of more stuff like this that'll that'll sort of finesse uh some of these more complicated trigger setups that would be cool yeah i could i could imagine this setup kind of being um you know being in the future being done with like less nodes maybe um where it's you know more like switching between different um different yeah. inputs Ooh. that was the uh stinger <laughs> so you can while the meta sounds playing you can if you got that singer there's a button here on the simulate that simulates playing it from the yeah. game you can also do it right there yep so if you push it you hear that stinger time and there's the... a delay because i think it's waiting for the next yep. beat that's yep. um yep 
Yeah. But the, I think the reason it doesn't continue is because the, the menu Boolean is probably set to, uh, Yeah, there's there's some the, there's some finagly stuff. Well, maybe the intensity is is uh, set too low or something. Oh, well, that's probably it. Or too high. Or... Yeah, if the intensity is full, then um, there will Let's go fifty percent. Hmm. <laughs> well, it works well, in the game. So that's cool. yeah, it worked in the game, which is important <laughs> to emphasize too that the, that we just demoed the game and everything is working. So the medicine. Oh, oh there you go. There. <laughs> is that it, it it's probably the two but first. maybe rich you were saying it sounded different maybe there is in fact a bug in here that yeah it sounded a little more it. happy like uh trigger happy than i'm used yeah. to um yeah. but uh if you want to look at the ambient stuff the ambient stuff is kind of cool so um the ambient is up down at the bottom and uh cool yeah it so with the ambient system it's it's similar in the sense that it's oh i'm hearing the metronome now too, yeah so the metronome's cool. working now <laughs> Um, if it's, it's similar in the sense that you're triggering clips, but, um, so if we, if we pull the intensity down lower, um, uh, and there's, there's some like, uh, there's some stereo delay stuff going on on the right side of this graph. Um, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Play ambient chord. Yeah. Oh, you know that that reminds me uh, that uh, some some of you might not realize is that one of the challenges that we have with these sample projects is that we all of the content um, must be available for licensees to use in their own projects. Yeah. And so uh, <laughs> that means that all of the sample content that our you know contractors use has to be redistributable so you can't just be a sound designer using like uh some some li library that you've purchased to, to to do your own work on all the all the sounds have to be sort of sourced uh with uh, either custom libraries or uh, or some of the some of the libraries that we have uh buyouts on basically um so Rich, uh, under these constraints, I think I gave you access to our um, a bunch of sound effects that we had. Yeah. So th I think that's how you built a lot of these instruments, huh? Yeah, a lot of the instruments are built from weapon sound effects, um, or it's just they're just they're just synth patches that I built from scratch. Um, nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is it's not it's not actually playing the ambient mode right now. It's playing the up tempo. It's sort of in between, so. In I think um, yeah, the, it wasn't working before because the, the, the uh, intensity parameter. The intensity was too high. Yeah. Yeah. It was maximum guns. If I recall, the intensity is inverted from what you would expect, right? You made it so like intensity one means that it's not intense, right? I, I, I well, can't remember because initially intensity one meant lots of music, and then we changed, we inverted it. Oh, and you just not, inverted it? <laughs> I don't know if yeah. I inverted it in the actual meta sound or not. I can't remember. Well, I remember um, going through it going like, why? See, like it if seems you, less intense when I increase the intensity value. <laughs> Dan, if you, so, if you go to the output mixing section, um, uh -huh. you can see the threshold where it switches between the two. So um, let's see. Um, oh, there's the interp. So the intensity it's gets... It's 50%. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so... Basically, it sort of it sort of sneaks in. Um, as yeah, higher intensity, intensity is lower intensity. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. I mean, it's cool there that you, you can kind of you can transition in you know smooth seamlessly between two different modes of your patch. Mm -hmm. like that's pretty cool. Yeah, oh, that that's sounds awesome. Ominous. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Yeah. Look out! That's that's when lots of stuff is going down. It's like a sp space dolphins. Or space whales. That was the initial. <laughs> that was the initial pitch for this, and so I, that's makes sense. Yeah, you were there. You remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Rich. I think we need to hear. 
I mean, Echo the Dolphin is... Echo, that that's true. That is a good game. but <laughs> It's pretty spacey, too. <laughs> yeah. So maybe go down and look at the ambient patch uh, now that we're, we're yeah. listening to it. Kind of see it. Um, so I got some LFOs but, here that are driving... Um, they're driving panning of um, these ambient chords. Yeah, so there, there are these two composition nodes, MX uh, play ambient chord. And those are... Um, Oh, so there, there's some funny stuff going on here with how I'm actually grabbing the wave files, um, the wave assets for these ambient chords. Um, basically, there's an array called elements, and I I kind of put them in, I kind of group them together in a single a single list. Um, it's kind of funky, okay. but yeah. essentially the idea is that um, they're they're they're, they exist in pairs of two, and so I wanted to trigger them together, but I wanted to randomly pick a set of two. That's cool. And so um, they kind of live in these in these uh, in these arrays of uh, of um, you know where I where see. it's like e. one two one two one two. Yeah, it's like a long, a short. Is that right? B long. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. B. B. Short. Yeah, exactly. So, so it'll pick one of those chords essentially every time. I cool. this is what the plus one is. Yeah, yeah so, so picks, it's a little picks an index and then the next one. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So one um, one thing to highlight here too is that uh, if you're familiar with sound cues, you couldn't do anything, obviously anything even approaching this. But one of the things that uh, is also not supported in blueprints is this node here, random get. I made that node uh, because it's something I wish was in blueprints, and I was like, I'm gonna, I, I hey, I'm gonna. Body director guy person. I can do this. You get to make these decisions. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, and uh, so the here is you pass in an, an array. You can give it weights, random weights right away. You can seed it, so you can make re. You know, in other words, once you click reset, you can actually yeah. make the same choices again. So you can get repeated random choices, which is obviously very useful for music. Um, and then there's this no repeats option here. So the no repeats is uh, which you're awesomely using is to kind of maximize your choices. And that is actually something that can be shared between meta sounds. So if you have uh, multiple instances of this meta sound, say for example, footstep, you can say actually share the no repeat state between multiple instances of this meta sound. So that you can say like this meta sound and this meta sound, make a random yeah. choice, but make sure you don't make the same random choice at the same time, you know? right. <laughs> uh, which is really useful because that happens all the yeah. time in game audio where you get sort of phasing if two different instances are choosing the random thing. Phasing is like- Definitely. What we well, speaking of, speaking of phasing, the actual triggering of these pairs of ambient sounds are, are yeah. phased randomly. Um, if you look at the um, if you look at the composition node MX play ambient chord, if you open that oh, one cool. up, yeah, yeah, let's look at that. Oh, whoa, oh, whoa, that was not <laughs> some abstract art. <laughs> uh, I thought they were. Maybe they're not. No, it's probably in the play element that you're that you're talking about. Oh, yeah, maybe it's in the play element. Yep. Oh whoa. my god. <laughs> something something went. That's... We'll have to look through this and clean it up if this is like that. I think that. it fits the theme of the music, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's all good. It's it was an artistic choice. Um, <laughs> yeah, so there's there's it's a like random throwing time your controller. You're just like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you see, there's a random time note in here, and it's just uh, playing these w with a up to a one a little, second little delay. Trigger. Nice. Yeah. So That's so cool. so so every time you play it, you know, you get a little bit of a different kind of relationship between the two the two phrases. That's great. So that's like so phasing. There's this term for phasing could be used if you play identical sounds at nearly the same time, but like one sample off, that will create a comb filter type effect. And we it, that's colloquially often called phasing in game audio. And you'll hear it sometimes. You'll be like, "Hey, I'm playing this footsteps, and I hear." there's a random choice at exactly the same time, it'll suddenly sound like a comb filter and you'll be like, ah, it sounds terrible. Or clip, because uh, of two sounds that are exactly the same, played exactly the same time, they'll sum their audio together, which could cause issues in the audio renderer, you know, clip, be twice mm -hmm. as loud and it might clip. So there's, there's lots of practical reasons you don't want to play exactly the same sound at exactly the same time. But the word phasing is also used in a musical context where it's like Steve Reich is a composer famous for this. Yeah. The idea is you, you get lots of variances by saying like, hey, let's offset these things by a certain amount so that like 
two overlaid things will create complicated patterns and that's what that's what you're kind of using it here for that which is great so you yeah. two sounds but infinite kind of expressions of those two sounds because you're playing them slightly off of each other mm -hmm. it's a great technique it's also something that's almost impossible in like a uh, sort of standards s vertical horizontal slices and, and yep. layers sort of system yeah the cool thing about um having this sort of like uh system where there's sort of a there's sort of like a rigid kind of tempo based um music component and state and then there's this ambient state is that the yep. ambient state can kind of just it can kind of just do whatever it wants yep. and kind of be yep. uh, a tempo like just kind of rubato right. and then you can just kind of kind of just cross phase between them so, so you don't so you, you don't worry about this... this being off basically because yeah it's so fluid yes yeah. exactly. exactly so this is the kind of thing that um like brian eno-esque you could imagine building a, an ambient music generator that would could literally run for ever and not technically repeat itself ever, right. and it would just be sort of an ambient music shifting system. So, uh, put, and it, it would be relatively simple. This ambient patch right here is actually pretty simple if you look yeah. if you think about it conceptually. It's pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. um, this is all interpolating um, yep. values, so that the the delay, the stereo delay, has um, all of its all of its parameters are being interpolated randomly between values. Oh, interesting. To just okay, create. so you have a, uh, it's like a custom selector that uh, does a little interpolation for you. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. So this um, type of thing right here, where you've made a library to kind of wrap a couple nodes together, that's entirely encouraged. Yeah. Um, and our expectation in the future uh, is that we would potentially ourselves pot plug uh, ship sort of meta sound composition libraries where it's like utilities that one might use. But also, yeah. like you can imagine, if you were in a game studio, you and your team could come you up with libraries. Own, yeah. That, yeah, you'd build your own custom library of utilities that you'd like, um, and then just share it between projects, make a content plugin, publish it on the marketplace. If you have your own kind of utilities that you know, whatever, like here's a utility to generate melodies and then plop it in and people can have your own melody generated. Mm -hmm. That kind of a thing. And this is also cool because you're actually doing dynamic interpolation on the stereo delay. So having DSP effects within the meta sound that then can become a compositional component is something yeah. that you couldn't do with just like a dropping on a stereo delay as a source effect. Yeah. It's like your DSP effect processing can be intimately part of the creative process in a way that yeah. literally can't be done in any other way. I mean, and because you because the delay time is being interpolated, like it's actually a, it's actually a pretty significant component of the sound of the ambient because yes. it's creating um, pitch artifacts over time yep. that like do little warpy kind of yeah, it, it creates like that pitch shift the it, space field the spaciness the space of whale. It. That's the yeah. that's the whale inside the space whale. <laughs> Otherwise, space it would dolphins. just space <laughs> yeah, space dolphins. <laughs> Yeah, when you when you change the delay time uh, of a of a uh, of a uh, mm. delay, it, it's a pitch shift. Um, yeah. It's basically like, Doppler. It's Doppler. In fact, I just wrote a node and published a tutorial on how to do that. Uh, by the way, I recommend it. Just search it on our thing. But uh, I checked it in for five points. So we will have a Doppler-based pitch shifter. So it'll actually allow you to do pitch shifting without uh, changing the timing of the sound. Yeah. So you can go like. You know, hello, I'm talking. Hello, I'm talking, I'm talking. Without being like, hello, I'm talking. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> Without affecting play rate. <laughs> but it does affect, because it's delay based, there is a slight delay, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's like, you know, 20 milliseconds. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, that's uh, amazing. Yeah, Doppler, cool. Doppler is a te technique that is quite useful. If you guys want to look at another crazy yeah. meta sound, maybe we should Let's look at the wind, the wind system. Oh, yeah. Um, sure. We could talk oh, yeah. about how that oh, was implemented. Yeah. Because that one's yeah, pretty let's, fun. Let's where do I go? Uh, so content. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so replug this again, oh, Dan. It might be worth showing the people if you have it up. The uh, Rich's blog. Do you have a link to it? It's called Music and Environmental I Audio. I closed Layer. all of my links just in case. Anyways, it's it's screens. linked. Tina has a has it linked on the landing page. Yeah, uh, we'll post it in chat too right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's basically it's a good a idea blog just of to like check all it of. All the awesome work that Rich did on this project. Yes, and you can see the way it looked well, when you. Rich last saw it. Yeah, you can see. <laughs> yeah, it, it was much nicer and much cleaner. 
uh, that's what it was intended to look like. So if you pop open the win system blueprint, that's kind of where that system starts. Um, and essentially the, the way that this system works is uh, it does some, um, some line traces to figure out how much geometry is around the player. And then it uses that information to create sort of like a, like a spatial map of like how much geometry is to the left of you and how much the geometry is to the right of you, how much is below you and uses all that to basically drive a, a wind, a wind sound. Um, and the wind sound is driven by geometry and it's also driven by the player's movement. So if the player is like, you know, being launched into the air off a launch pad, you know, th there's going to be a wind component or if they're falling, there's going to be a wind component. Um, Cool. So that's the pond speed here that uh, you're you're mapping to a norm. It looks like a normalized speed parameter that gets fed into po the uh, mm -hmm. pond speed. Yeah. So that's the and speed, then and have... then you'll see there's this boolean here to the left a little bit uh -huh. uh, called is exterior. Um, and so in um, in the control point map, which is outdoors, this component is flagged as being an exterior an exterior environment, and so you get nice. you also get the geometry based wind. Um, uh, which cool. kind of just says, oh, you're out in the open, so there's lots of wind because you're outside, whereas there's a map. The other map uh, is indoors, so there's no there's no environmental wind. It's just a movement-based wind. And the, Oh, and then we, then we um, if it's like to the left of the uh, uh, player, then we get, we add left-wise, we add values to the pan L, basically. Yeah. And then to the right pan R. Cool. And then you can look at these other traces. I think they're all being added to this hits property. Uh, this is a macro for tra for doing the traces. And um, it's just checking the distance. Mm. Um, figure out. Oh, the, and then the... adding. If it's a yes. successful hit, then there's a hit added. It's basically it. creating a ratio of like the number of traces that hit something. And then it's using that as a value. So say, you know, six out of eight traces, or I think there's what, five, five traces, four out of yeah, five traces hit five. something. Yeah. Then you Never know that you're in an, down. An, then you know you're in an enclosed space because, you ah, know, so the, yeah, the less number of traces, the more out in the open it is. And the more traces, mm -hmm. the, the more enclosed. And so the less Very wind there should be. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. And then, so, so the meta sound is just kind of a bunch of crazy noise synthesis stuff <laughs> that I had a lot of fun. So did exploring. you use the noise generator or is it uh, have like a noise gen? I think so. Um, we should take a look at it. Uh, Sweet. That's another thing, by the way, we're exploring is more noise options and stuff because noise is very useful for sound design. Yeah. So if you press yeah, play on this, you can kind of hear it going crazy. Um, and if there's, oh, I think that one is, some of these are, oh, I think me meant to stay the same. I think the wind is the primary one. There we go. And then there's also probably speed that you could mess with somewhere. <laughs> it's probably a speed well, input somewhere. Over here. Oh, here it is all the way on the Pond right. Speed? Here. Yeah, that's it. Nice. I see you using our skeuomorphic devices everywhere. Did you like having that type of interface and interaction? Yes. Yeah, I love I love having those. They're super great. I totally planned yeah. that question. It was, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's well, was so having this sort of in graph knob and controller is also a, a new thing in Unreal Engine. Um, and it's another thing that I was like, I've, I've always wanted that in Blueprint, you know, be able to see values and knobs. But it's Blueprints, the script is not really interactive while it's running. So it wouldn't be as useful in Blueprint. But uh, in MetaSounds, it was like, I want to be able to just plot my thing and see it. The benefit of skeuomorphism is not just in terms of ease of control. It's also useful to see in a, at a glance what the value of something is. So it, yeah. Because otherwise, without that, you'd have the input parameters on the left, and you'd have to click the individual elements and see like what was that value set at. So it's aesthetics, but also useful from a you know very practical standpoint. I'm curious, by the way, why you used the seed on that pink noise. Um, that is a great question. Uh. Consistent, consistent. <laughs> Make it real consistent. <laughs> Consistency. These seeding the 
filter. I have no idea. It's been too yeah. long. I don't. Yeah, I don't it remember. probably doesn't matter. But I was just curious if you had a reason for it. It's a valid so answer. I don't remember. Well, <laughs> yeah. So the, it's a good question as to why you would even want seed on a noise generator. Um, uh, my answer would be probably so that you could do sample and hold and get re repeated choices. There is um, sample, so sample and hold in oh, here. Okay, so maybe um, that's. But then the, the no. worry is, <laughs> it's I don't but know. negative one means no, like random seed. By the way, so this this, this reminds me, Aaron, we need to have a reset. Oh yeah, because we have that seed. Yep, you're right. We should have a reset. I think resetter. the sample and hold is. Be I'm using the sample and hold as a as an LFO. Yep, um, that's a good usage of it. Yeah, to retrigger uh, to get different um, like vet like uh, and, and values basically yeah. that through this interp node they pipe into. Um, if you pop to the right by, a little bit. By the like way, this, uh, we actually have someone working on this. It's going to be one node. Yeah. Nice. I thought about that. I was like, this would be nice as a single node that yeah, didn't yeah. have, that didn't have the, the, um, so, the trigger. The trigger yes. thing. So the, 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 just in a nutshell for people listening, what, the, the, what he wants is low frequency random noise for low frequency oscillation. A LFO is what we call it. But technically, it's noise, so it's not an oscillation. But you basically want the ability to randomly and slowly vary things. Yeah. And you could have done this probably without this, uh, even in 5.0 with just a trigger repeat and then a random value. Uh, you know, you don't really need to use a sample and hold for it. But sample and hold, but by the way, if you don't know. This one is being slewed. Oh, but I guess, uh, the, yeah, it would, either way you could slew yeah. it. With you, could, yeah. you could do a random uh, float value. Um, yeah. It would be, have very similar... Yeah. Okay. But with the, but, the, but here's the thing is that the nice thing about using noise is you have yeah. frequency distribution that's different. Yeah. So if you used white noise or pink noise, that's, that's right. something that you couldn't get you away get different with. Random it's like a probability float. weighting. Yeah, it's like this a probability. This white noise is basically random float between yes. negative 1 and it, 1. It actually under the hood is random float. <laughs> yeah. But so but pink noise has a different distribution of frequency. It's, yeah, so. it's a it's a probability weighting. Uh, but but anyways, my point though, I just want to emphasize what sample and hold is because that might be a weird idea. What it, sample and hold does is it takes that audio buffer and when it gets triggered, it grabs that value and holds it. And so periodically here, he, there's this like random noise buffer, and then periodically he grabs the value. If if this was visualized, you'd see this thing trigger, like yeah. uh, you know, you would see it going like. Which and is, it's basically just being used to drive like filter parameters. Exactly. Yeah. But anyway, so it, it grabs it. Now, sample and hold, what, the way he's using it, I think it's probably overkill. You don't need the audio buffer for that because this is just all LFO. But sample and hold is useful for audio rate control. Like, so you could feed this in some other audio. You could like modulate. I don't know. It's an audio rate modulation thing. So it's very modular synthy. This, this paradigm is, mm -hmm. you know, behind yeah. Dan and myself, this is a very common <laughs> paradigm in the world of modular synthesis. So this is actually this actually brings up something that we've probably mentioned before on previous live streams about Metasounds, but it's always good to, re to reiterate, is that Metasounds um, are sample accurate yes. for the most part, but there are stuff that we, we sort of, that we expect to not need to be sample accurate. So for example, here we have an audio buffer so that's is, sample accurate. <laughs> that's sample accurate, which is basically a, a, an array of samples that gets passed from one node to the yes. next. And this trigger so, is also sample accurate. Yes. Right? But this float that's value, not. <laughs> that's not. It updates at what we call control rate or block rate. And for yep. meta sounds right now, that's about 100 hertz. Yep. So about 100 times a second, which is still faster than a lot of uh, yep. you know, game, game frequency, but... Mm. Uh, it's not but that's something to keep in mind. Yeah. So to to do this with a with just a random node and to not use the the audio buffer like the noise yeah. that would be would be slightly more performant as well. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's another that's thing that we don't have in this version of MetaSounds that we're it's on the roadmap is dynamic feedback about the CPU cost of things as you do it. So you you'll see like oh this node is more expensive than this node and then have a running tally of the general CPU cost of your MetaSound and sort of yeah. give you as you're designing it go like oh this is probably I don't need this to be <laughs> an audio rate you know noise generator I could just right. periodically trigger noise because in this case we're truncating it anyways to float so and if you if you hook this up Dan it's probably just going to sound the same right yeah <laughs> yes it will that's cool maybe a question for you Rich how would you expect us to give you visual feedback on that kind of based on what Aaron was saying. 
we well, wanted to show you some costs. Would you want like colors, icons? Oh, um, like? performance cost kind of stuff? Yeah. Um, it would be cool to see it on a per node basis, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like to get a sense of where the bottlenecks are. Um, like yep. to have like a some sort of button or something you could press that just kind of it shows you sort of the the perf the perf cost of It'd be like a nodes. smiley face in the corner of the nose. <laughs> smiley it's face. Just, it's just a frown. It's like what is like, a number? Very and then expensive. a no, a frown. Frown. A, <laughs> emojis are dropping the granulator and it's like mm. well I, if it's going to be emojis I want like custom control over what the emojis are <laughs> and the ranges. No, Rich, it's just going to be my face. <laughs> <laughs> Just Aaron getting I'm gonna, madder and I'm going to force and... everybody to just look at me. And, I... <laughs> and when you do a really good job, I'll pop out. It'll be like a like clippy art. It'll be like, hey, this sounds great. What if the whole node just started to turn red and like it started to get like wavy and like it started melting? Like, this sounds, so you can't this sounds terrible. Until Come you on, you can it. do better. <laughs> I thought about having the nodes just be larger if they're more expensive. So they're just like, when it's really expensive, it's just like huge. Like if, <laughs> if it's really optimal, like you can't even see it because it's too small. Right. I can really only works. imagine the tickets that we'd be getting. People are like, I think there's a virus in my engine or something. It's, no, no, that's just a feature. Less CPU. <laughs> this is bringing back. This is bringing back memories of playing tabletop simulator with friends, where you can actually like, you can manipulate the scale of like the game pieces while you're playing. Exactly. So you could, like you could make some of their pieces really big. And some of I love tabletop simulator. <laughs> anyway, so this is this is a great example. I think uh, of procedural audio um, fundamental synthesis for noise generation. And there's a lot you can do with this. Uh, wind is a, a good example, but there's all kinds of applications yeah. where noise is a great element. Yeah. Um, this is just a good simple one that you can do yeah. with pure synthesis that um, sounds pretty realistic. So yeah, seem like yeah. It looks like you've got the uh, uh, the pink noise generator going through both a high pass and a low pass filter. Yeah, indeed. Do we have a band that I mean that could be a band pass? The nice thing about no, no, doing this, no. by the way, what's what's great about this is you have yeah. different cutoff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and they're independent, uh, which yeah. is great. But band passes, you, we, I think we have a band pass, right? Don't yeah, we? well, we have a state variable. Uh. It's possible that, that I just, just did, found pass. found that oh, yeah. too late, and I didn't want to change it. <laughs> well, no, you know, no, this is it's, this this is this good is because you can independently control it. Independently with control it. With a band yeah. pass, you set the the Single. cutoff frequency, and then the 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 uh, true. True, true, true. the band. Yeah. it's not as easy to control. This so that's nice about the band. Uh, if you want to talk about using the band pass, you can use the band pass. What's nice about band pass is you could add that in as a different layer, and mm -hmm. with some resonance control. Add the sort of whistling element yeah. to your wind. Yep. I've done yep. that all. Yeah. Yeah. Like a. Make it nice and yeah. cold. Yeah. Exactly. I'm here to provide the sound effects. <laughs> Perfect. That was really good. I didn't even have to, for I didn't illustrating it. for the great. audience. Well, I mean, I you need are to get the, the, sound. the sounds, Aaron. I need to get, sam <laughs> need to get samples from somewhere. I'm, I'm, I'm there for hire. I'll just sit there and make sound <laughs> effects for your game. Can we can we buy out your your library of whistling sounds? Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> cool. Very cool. Yeah, and then you've got a little, um, little balance. Yeah, banner. that's a that's a balancer kind of thing. Nice. Oh yeah, that's the other thing too to talk about. By the way, is that we have panning and meta sound, so you can play your meta sound as a two D sound. Two D being from the perspective of the game engine, it's not doing the spatialization, and you right. could then in your meta sound do all the spatialization that you want. So we've got stereo panner, but we've also got a uh, what's the other panner? We got the, the well, your favorite is the ITD panner. The ITD panner. So that's like ninety percent of an HRTF. It's just really, really nice and cheap. It's just great. So you, so ITD is, stands for interaural time delay, and it, you yeah. can set an angle. Your you know uh, how big distance your head factor. Is. How big your head is. <laughs> <laughs> so you can. This is... <laughs> Hilarious. It's really the ITD is really that's a very important factor there. I think it I is. think that should be True. the first I think that should be the first thing that comes up when you start the game. It's like please enter your head with <laughs> how big is your head? No, for for absolute real. You know, like an audio setting. Should be like how yes. big is your head? Yeah. It should absolutely be an audio setting. Well, that's one hundred percent. That's why I was thinking VR should automatically take your head size. And yes. Because it no it knows it, it, you know, it should be able to. It should be able to, right? Yeah. Actually, I had a, I was at, I was at a, a conference for um, uh, Audio Engineering Society, 
and it had mm -hmm. uh, like Logitech on the panel and all these like sort of companies that make devices. And I was talking about spatialization. You go, know, you guys are building devices. You know, when you do that, get that data, like send it out. If you're going to build it at spatialization, like the size of your head is such an important factor for, yeah. you know, because we talk about custom HRTF, like you know, personalized HRTF. The m biggest factor is the size of your head. <laughs> I would be so curious what the average size of people's heads is and what sort of range. As, of as heads somebody who cannot width. find a hat that fits me, uh, <laughs> that's right. there is a wide variety <laughs> of head sizes. <laughs> I'm like pet hat challenged. I have to go to like fancy hat dasheries <laughs> to like. <laughs> I go, I go to the, the, the guy at the, the, you know, the haberdashery, and I'm like, I'm looking for a hat, none of your hats. And they go and they wait, measure my head, and they're like, oh, oh they oh, don't make hats. I got a special for... hat. <laughs> Heads of your size. It's like they opened up big-headed <laughs> hat options. Oh Big God. and tall makes a hat section specifically. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You're not a very large person, but your head is like the size of an eight-foot person. Like, what is... Anyways, head size is important. So yeah, uh, cool. Well, what's fun is people will be able to explore these um, and learn a lot by untangling them. Oh yeah, this is a good simple thing that I always that I commented. That's good to know. Which is, um, if you have a zero to one value and you multiply it by itself, it's the same as an ease in. Um, it's the same as taking you know you have a linear value from zero to one. If you multiply it by itself, it's the same as a the same as a ease in um, equation. Okay. This is very relaxing. I actually kind of feel like I'm at the ocean. I know, right? Mm -hmm. I love. Great. I don't want to. I, I love <laughs> environmental sound design. I love environmental sound. Maybe we can do our Q and A over this. Speaking of Q and A, <laughs> we're at twelve thirty. Maybe we can transition to Q and A unless we have anything else oh, we want to touch yeah. on. Did you want yeah, to run through the game again? again? Oh yeah, yeah we maybe can we can play. Yeah, it's, I hope great. we didn't break it. Don't save anything. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. I have not saved anything. Uh, you you uh, mentioned there was another level. Can we play that other level? That's better for reverb and stuff. Well, I think, uh, yeah, but it won't be as good for wind. Oh, we looked at both. Be. I think we looked at both in the beginning, didn't Did we? we? Yeah. So, oh, we'll, no. oh, maybe it was off air. I don't remember. No, no. We'll, we'll, so, if you go to start a game, there are two levels. You, you see three. There are two levels: control <laughs> and elimination. And What's the reason exploder? Is, exploder. I was told this is this is the thing about you know when we're when we're like uh, under oh. the, the the pressure of uh, time, exploder. I was told was not going to ship in 5.0, but uh, <laughs> Michael Noland <laughs> stuck it, it in there. <laughs> so there's no audio treatment for that so one. There's no audio treatment. None of us have looked yeah. at it. Um, so yeah, that's and we never will. <laughs> But that's a fun them. challenge for anyone in this call who's ready to hey, learn. That's, that's your right. starting there place. You Show us what you can do. Grace, with it and... the eternal optimist. <laughs> yeah, someone, someone, do a treatment for the exploder level. Yes, yeah, exactly. and then and then send and then it send as a pull it. request. And we'll check <laughs> Rich personally will look for <laughs> submissions to give you feedback. So the uh, the uh, there's the control map and then there's the elimination map. The control map is the outdoor level where you're taking points, and then the ex the uh, elimination match is the sort of indoor level where it's just sort of uh, the the uh, Whoever whoever can shoot the most, basically. Shooty, shooty yeah. level. Now you'll see you'll see one's called convolution, one's called expanse. So if you search in your browser, expanse and filter by <laughs> levels, <laughs> uh, filter by levels, you'll see uh, there you go the l ex l underscore expanse, and this will actually uh, take you directly to that map, um, and then. We can probably do L underscore con solution. There we go. And that will, oh, this is the black, the blackout map. Um, oh, one thing I forgot to mention about the, uh, the music system is that it's driven by the amount of gun, amount of weapon fire. So the more weapon fire there is, yeah, like it's, it's actually passing that data into the system. Yep. Um, That's the intensity. Yeah, that's the intensity of the. Every time uh, uh, we could look at, the, I think you you added it to the um, the uh, gameplay effects, right? I think the, so. Uh, gameplay, uh, sorry, gameplay cues. Cues. Yeah. Yeah. So the gameplay cues. If we take a look at some of the the uh, gunshot 
uh, effects there, you'll look and you'll see in the graph that um, it's feeding a, uh, a value into the music system. And um, the uh, and so basically every time someone f fires a weapon, it's a it's adding to a value that's constantly trying to go down, basically. Yeah. And uh, that's hey, your Dan, intensity level. Yeah. Uh, can you remind me for the panning? This sounds very binaural. What what did you what was your panning technique? You uh, let's take a look. Um, so if we go to options, are, are we we're not using residents, are we? Oh no! I, I use IT, ITD. So, th so that's important. When I mentioned yeah, yeah. about ITD, this is the ITD panning. Yeah. So this is three D. Uh, so it's very three D. And um, if we uh, if we have this on, then you'll use the ITD panner. Yep. Uh, and then if you have it off, um, it will just use a regular panner. Yeah. What's but, uh, background some audio? People... That means uh, when you tab out. Oh, yeah, so when we goes. so when we lose focus, um, like if you ch check your email, uh, the uh, the application normally would the audio would sort of go silent, but you can have it turn on. And so this is something that some people like and some people want to add to their to their projects. So we have it here, so you can have an example of how to do it. Cool. It's cool. And then we also have selections. You can see, I'm using my RME baby your face. Baby face. I have, I have the same interface. It's That's a great interface. Army's yeah. Army's awesome. So this, this, but for... this is this lets you select your different audio device, which is also awesome. You can see how many I have, which is a lot. <laughs> but, it's not, it's not but a contest. Way more than anybody will ever have. This is something I was gonna say. Though yeah. people have to often ask how to set this up, and so this is a good project for this your games to exactly. see how to set this kind of thing up. And this is another thing that I was really adamant to add, which was uh, this will swap out a compressor on the. Uh, the the final submix so um yeah we you know i hope there's so much to talk about with this so maybe yeah. we'll have another live stream to sort of go into a lot of those other stuff but but yeah so we're using the itd just is that a promise for <laughs> yeah it's absolutely we'll have yeah. a, we'll have i'm gonna say it publicly we will we will do the live stream as much as people want to hear about audio <laughs> that's right it's on record you can't get yeah. out of it now <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I, I want to remind people, I, this is ITD, it is extremely inexpensive, and it sounds really good uh, in terms yeah. of binaural pan. Yeah, so I... It's I, extremely in cheap. In terms of... My, my feeling is, in terms of, like, what does the heavy lifting for making something feel like it's, you know, in dire some direction, some particular direction. Yeah. The first one is just the balance between the sort of yeah. intensity of a sound between yeah. the left and right ears. Yeah. And the second one is the timing between, between the left and right ears. We're, yeah. Those very, are the two we're very sensitive to the timing of a sound between our left and right ears. Yeah. Um, so that's a also, ILD for interaural level difference and ITD interaural time yeah. difference. Those are the two main factors for pain. Um, and and you'll, you'll notice that ITD is, ITD is actually a lot more better in VR than it is even the way that we're using it right now. Yeah. And that's because you have head, head tracked. Uh, yeah, you're head tracking. So if you, any of you have ever seen a dog tilt its head, it's because it's trying to, to tell whether something's above it or, or not. Mm. It's actually using that to determine. And we do that too, just subtly, yeah. all, all day long. We're sort of moving our head around. And tilting our heads is a way to in, sort of localize a sound whether it's you know it's altitude basically yeah mm. all right so i think we should do q a apparently we yeah. have a lot of questions again uh we we were overwhelmed with There's questions last time nice the defeated singer <laughs> i didn't make so that one. this that time cool. we have uh behind the scenes uh uh anna i'll just mention her she's been sorting questions for us so that we, oh, awesome. we don't have to sort it live um and so uh she has done a great job, but we have a lot of questions. Um, so okay. we can kind of look. So we also have like this Google Doc we're sharing. And so Anna's nicely s sorted it. <laughs> so I guess uh, I can just start. Um, uh, we will ignore the, the that section. <laughs> There's a section where like, mm, these not the greatest questions. Uh, but let's um, meta there sound. No bad questions, only bad no answers. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'll skip some of the deeper um i guess we can pick a couple of these the sort of architect there's some meta sound architecture questions sort of low level questions about meta sounds uh could you use meta sounds with some fairly complicated logic to create an advanced music system i think we said answered definitively yes on that one yeah uh, that would be <laughs> nice. uh 
uh, are there any resources actually, for Dalit? Actually, just to, I just want to elaborate yeah. on that question. Yeah. And this is something that's it's very weird to me because part of my job uh, is to build systems. And um, Meta Sounds, it's so I've it's so fast to build a custom implementation of music, interactive music in yeah. Meta Sounds that I sometimes question whether or not the, there's value in me building a generic system. Because meta sounds are so quick, so it's 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 really weird, uh, and uh, yeah, it it is on a roadmap where we have uh, some some plans to create sort of just drop and yeah. turnkey solutions. Dan has been working on some plugins through our sample projects. We want to take those like soundscapes is a plugin for ambience that Dan's working on. Yeah. Uh, what what was the music system you called it? Is a underscore, uh, underscore is going to be a music system we'll make. So there are there is a movement to make a sort of like here you go. Drop in your audio files, yeah. and you got you got a music system. But there is this kind of like it's so easy to make your own. Like, why do I yeah. need to do this? But, yeah. but there's a, there's a demand for it. Yeah. Uh, so, but that's a good question. Um. Uh, let's see. In in code, can I enforce that I expect certain parameters from an audio component? Yes, actually. Uh, it's it's beginnings in 5.0, and we're going to keep building on it. There's this idea in MetaSounds called interfaces. Um, I don't know, Dan, if you want to load up a MetaSounds to show. We've got some stuff. There are some interfaces already, yeah. But we want to, it's not there yet, but we want users to be able to define and create their own interface. So it might be a, a unique asset, or I don't know, there's some design on it. But the idea is that you can say, I want this MetaSound to implement this interface, which then defines sort of inputs that are common. And then that can be queried from gameplay. So you could say, hey, gameplay, make sure that this meta sound that's been dropped in has implemented this interface that I need that it needs to ha be on it so that I can feed it my gameplay system. So like footsteps, character, guns. So you can make like a gun interface for your meta sound. And then so when you drop your meta sound, it knows how to, you know, you can validate that that meta sound is hooked up and you you don't necessarily need to worry like, oh, I forgot to handle this input. There's gonna be like handshaking going on. So we have some of that implemented now. Uh, we use this uh, and this kind of came on late for 5.0, but there's this interface for one shot. If you see on the left there on Dan, Dan's thing, yeah. uh, I can annotate this right here is interfaces. And you see that we have, uh, uh, let me clear my annotation there. You can, the, there's ue.source.oneshot, ue.attenuation. Those are data interfaces that we are like C++ driven that you can implement to get on the left there, you'll see on the inputs panel, um, inter, inter, like sort of it's name spaced out. So if you scroll up, you'll see UE and then it's sort of sub. So that would be your interface for inputs. And then we want to make it so that users can make their own inputs. So it'd be like gunshot dot hit gunshot, you know, whatever you can be like my project dot this, that kind of a thing. And so it's a big idea because I agree that you'll want to be able to enforce that. That yeah. was a long answer, but yeah, this we're, we're thinking about that deeply. The, the way that you can do that now, by the way, um, just so you're aware is to use, uh, to take advantage of another feature called presets. Yes. Um, and so uh, if we if we go to the um, back to the meta sounds here, um, you could see like we have a uh, let's see, there's a preset 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 preset. Pre presets are basically a reference to a base graph with custom default inputs, uh, so that you basically can have like a hundred assets. So yeah, this so this is would be this is what I the presets. Edit, yeah. But all the inputs are are identical to the uh, to the base. Yep. So in the future, we'll probably present a different view for presets here. This is sort of a plan. So when you load up a preset, there's some ideas that we have on making a really cool interface where you can do preset yeah. surfing and mass editing and all that kind of stuff. But for now, it, it actually uses the composition architecture. So it kind of creates an uneditable composed meta sound that you right. can double click and jump to the base graph. And what's cool is when you modify that base graph, it'll propagate to all your presets automatically. And uh, combined with that is some ideas that we have in meta sounds on versioning. So you as a, a sound designer could control your versioning of your graph. So you could say, this yeah. is a minor version, this is a major version, and then sort of create a mechanism for you to update your dependent preset assets so in um, this case just as a quick just sort of a quick explanation of of this in this project i felt that uh the input of an, an array of sounds and then a minimum max uh pitch uh what and um 
a sort of gain uh, value was sufficient for a random selection. Because there's all these other inputs I could ha potentially have, yeah. right? I could, I could affect the start time of the sound. Yep. I could, you know, all sorts of things. But I just wanted those, you know, four parameters, and uh, for all of almost all of our um, random select selections, we use this preset instead, where it's just like, okay, we can just define the min max range yep. of pitch value, how loud it should be, and then the sounds we want to randomize, and then yep. we just go on our way. And then when we do a uh, the tool that allows you to do preset surfing, you'd be able to very oh easily yeah it'll do be it'll be mass it'll editing be awesome. and this yeah, will yeah. only get better this sort of UX. Yeah. I see another question well, here. Yes. Oh, sorry, go on. Finish. I could thought. keep going on that forever. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I just wanted to touch on this next question I saw because I love this one and I had the same question before, but like, um, how performant is our like our meta sounds compared to something like sound cues, which some people in the stream might be using today. So uh, if you do a fair comparison, uh, in other words, <laughs> if you make a sound cue and then reproduce it in Metasounds, Metasounds are cheaper. If you do an unfair comparison, Metasounds can get a lot more expensive because it's a lot more powerful. So, so the question then is like, how performant are they? If you do a lot of stuff in a Metasound, it can cost a lot CPU wise, which is why it's really important that we get those CPU feedback features in there. But if you're not doing much, random playing of sounds, random selection, which is basically all sound cues could do, uh, uh, meta sounds is cheaper. And one of the things that's really important to understand the distinction between s how sound cues process and how meta sounds process is that sound cues process on a, a named synchronous thread yeah. called the audio thread, or sometimes yeah. I call it the audio logic thread. Yeah. Um, and so all of the all of the sound cues that you have in your in your that are playing are are all being evaluated on that thread, which is lockstep with the game thread yeah. so it's potential that your sound cues could be big enough that you could hold the game thread back it's possible but meta sounds they all uh, process in their own asynchronous tasks and so if you have room on your cpu somewhere regardless of your thread um yeah. situation then you you've probably got the, then you're probably fine in, in terms of processing. And, and there usually is room somewhere on your CPU. It takes, uh, it uses the same architecture we have for decoders, which are done asynchronous. And so it, instead of going to an async task for a decoder, it goes to an async task for MetaSound generation. Uh, all right, sample accurate on any platform? Yes, because our renderer is multi-platform, so. Uh, uh, um, how safe is MetaSound? Can you go full PD max and blow up the speakers if you aren't careful? That's <laughs> that's a question born from experience. So we we uh, actually MetaSound Meta they have blown up and they turn off. Uh, we have some limiters uh, in the audio renderer, but uh, there there's a question about how much we do that. Is it per MetaSound or this kind of thing? So there is some debate on how to do that. We're probably going to do some kind of DC filter and a uh, hard limiter at the end. So DC DC filter, if your like, sound is just sitting there at one value, you want to not play that to your speakers. Even if it's not clipping or blowing up, you really don't want to just write out to your speakers a single audio rate value. That's bad. Yeah. Uh, so DC, which is direct current uh, filter, would catch that and mute it out. Um, so we want to do that. But we don't have it now, so be a little careful with your medicines. <laughs> Uh, but we had cases where it was like a, a NAN, uh, n not a number, was in a bug in MetaSound, and then all of a sudden all of the audio in the project broke, and we're like, what? So we were hunting NANs. We didn't break anything. It's fine. You're, no one's ears were hurt. Hunting uh, NANs. Yeah, well, yeah, NAN hunting. It was a, there would be a pop, but uh, yeah, yeah. You know, it, 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 if, you're, if you're on a large uh, you know, midfield monitors and you've got their full blast, then that pop could be pretty loud, but yeah. Yeah. I, I'd just be careful. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's enough. Yeah, all right. So let's do some implementation questions for Lyra. Uh, are, yeah, all the examples are in Lyra. Someone asked, are these all in Lyra? They're all Lyra. Is this real-time processing? Yes, it's all real-time. Yep. Uh, it's constant audio output. Um, now, one thing is that when, when you, you can't patch while it's running, Although you, it, we don't lock out patching, uh, you have to stop and replay if you want the new connections to 
So it's not so, like Maximus P if you're familiar where you can like modify the graph and it automatically like stops and restarts the DSP graph. Metasounds doesn't do that. So you, if you make connections while it's playing, you've got to stop it. Any, any new instance will work. So if you're working on a one shot, um, you can work on it while it's, while you're in Pi, while you're playing an editor and. Oh, that's a, that's a, I was talking about the Metasound you... editor. Yeah. Oh. Oh, I but see yeah, you're, that, you're making you're making a good point though. Is that you can be editing the meta sound while you're playing in Pi. Yeah, and totally. and you could be making it. So if you're sh shooting a gun, to d design a gun, you could be sitting right. there with the meta sound editor open with your Pi session, shoot it, make a tweak, shoot it, make a yeah. tweak, shoot it, make yeah, a tweak. totally. Not starting and restarting Pi, which is pretty cool. That's a really yeah. good point. Yeah, it's but it would only be for new instances of the sound. Yeah. So if it was something like yeah. music, then you'd have to stop it and restart it. But yeah. But that's, I mean, you could just make a blueprint action that's like stop and restart. So if oh, you yeah, wanted to, totally. That's yeah. easy. That's an easy sort of like debug feature. Um, all right. Uh, are, are the shooting sounds also produced in Unreal? Yes. Everything in that project is all Unreal. Well, uh, so what is... The, yeah. I mean, the, we did have sound designers. So yeah. we talked about this possibly having Gustav on. on. Gustav yes. Rasman works for Sweet Justice or through Sweet, Sweet Justice. I don't know exactly the how the... Sweet Justice works uh, with their like contractors, but he used to work uh, at Dice, so he worked on Battlefield, and so we got someone. Yeah, he's uh, like a world expert on he's, gun he's sound design. Awesome gun yeah. sound designer, and so we'd like to bring him on. And but but yeah, so there are samples that uh, that were produced by our sound designers, um, but uh, and they're all in here. Uh, but so yeah, and so you can use them for your games, by the way. Like all of this yeah, is redistributable. So if you like the way those guns sound, you can copy yeah. them wholesale. Just rip, rip it off. Rip, yeah. you know, just go ahead and use it in your games. <laughs> For Unreal Engine projects only. For Unreal Engine projects, yeah. 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 Uh, which is cool. I mean, it's a good yeah. starting point. Uh, maybe there would be a whole future basis of games based off of Gustav's guns. <laughs> yeah. He's, I mean, it's a master class on gun uh, implementation. It's deep yeah. enough that it's worth another live stream to go and invite Gustav on to really deep dive on gun sound design. It's a very interesting topic. Yeah. Uh, and Rich uh is his expertise is in music uh may, you've probably done guns before rich i'm sure but like it was cool to give gustav this sort of like you do your magic on guns yeah <laughs> rich definitely. you do magic on music <laughs> yeah definitely uh, yeah <laughs> but yeah if so in lieu of that just check out the gun stuff and we'll, i'll see if we actually it's probably a good idea to get gustav to write a dev blog as well i think mm -hmm. that'd be cool like a deep dive on guns for that um Anyways, uh, all right. So, do you play notes or do you sample or both? It's a, a mixture of samples and note-based stuff. I think. Is it rich if that? Is do that I play correct? notes? Well, the question was, do you play notes or do you use sample or both? And I think he's getting at for music systems. Is it like music yeah. stitching or is it note-based? You know that kind of a thing. This system is is sample-based. Um, yeah. yeah, this one is sample-based. Um, but you have some note esque type things like that ambient system was samples, but you know, kind of, like I would call it like maybe notes. hybrid esque, hybrid note. Uh, yeah, there were like, there were, I mean, it was definitely made up of different layers and um, using, using different techniques, whether it was like triggering those, yeah. using probability or yep. uh, using musical phasing, to, stuff like that. Yep. So, but you're not, yeah. like, I would, you're not like doing like pitch. Maybe I'm not like selecting like, pitches like, yeah, or like anything like that. Yeah. yeah. Pitch controller so like Metasounds is design. potentially, I mean, you could do that in Metasounds. Somebody, totally. I think I saw in here, uh, somebody asking about instruments. So we don't have a Metasound instrument right now, um, but you could put together an instrument that does it. Uh, actually, Zuko, who is doing uh, Mix, uh, is it called Mix Universe? Mix universe. Yeah. 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 Um, so he, he has a whole music system that's using Metasounds, and that he basically wrote a sampler and uses Metasounds with it. So you can do note-based music with Metasounds. Uh, Rich just didn't do it here. I mean, you can, and, you can do it with the synth, the synth uh, yes. generators that we have. Yes, we have, we have synth generators. Yeah. We have but, like, but even a sample-based instrument. Yeah. would. So a, uh, you could do that. It would be a little fungly, I think, in Metasounds be, yeah. today. And it's on the roadmap to make a kind of a, uh, a sampler format. So you could imagine having a data file that is like my instrument, here's my samples, here's the MIDI ranges, and then have that as an asset that you can just drop into an instrument player in Metasound. That would be really awesome. Um, yeah, and so awesome. definitely uh, we want to do that kind of thing. Um, all right, so how to learning questions. Is there some sort of master class for Metasounds, like an in-depth course? Uh, 
we are in the process of writing some courseware on MetaSounds. We have we have a sort of get started tutorial that came out with early access. I can't remember if we've updated it for 5.0, but it's probably mostly the same. And we have a uh, UE Learning Hub uh, that we're trying to publish more stuff to. Anna's, uh, our, who's sorting our questions, uh, she's a, our uh, dev support engineer. She's going to be doing a lot of tutorials on MetaSounds and publishing there. So stay tuned. Uh, we're working on it. Yeah, Anna's um, Rich is great. Yeah, Anna's great. Yeah, I would just add, we do still have on the community hub um, some really great kind of shorter tutorials. Dan, Aaron, and myself have been posting on there. So if yep. you want to learn about things like um, presets, there's an example we have with, you know, yep. setting up foot falls to go into. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, Grace very made a simple. great tutorial. <laughs> yeah, if I could do it, anyone could do it. But uh, <laughs> so that would be a great entry level. Like if you had nothing, uh, you yeah. no knowledge in the space coming in, that one yeah. I would recommend because that's basically what I did a few weeks back. <laughs> Um, the other thing I would add too is um, we are posting more content there, but something neat that you might not have heard about is there's actually code snippets that people have been uploading as well to there. Yep. And it's exciting. We saw our first meta sounds snippets being uploaded directly. So these are people that have just built small little things. They're copying and pasting it. So you could actually copy and place that blueprint yep. into a meta sound. And that might be a neat place to start kind of experimenting yep. with some simpler designs as you iterate and kind of learn more about the system. There's a bug right now with uh, copy and pasting with new with input parameters from a snippet that we're working on so that like you could theoretically do the whole thing over including input parameters. But right now there's an issue with that, just FYI. Um, <laughs> the other thing is we're going to have a custom, I, I was told this recently, we're going to have a custom MetaSound viewer. So even in the in the snippet viewer on the website, there'll be like oh, a awesome. MetaSound specific visualizer. So you, you'll be able to see the graphs nicely. Um, uh we also have a, a online learning resources, like a whole thing to check out. There's nothing on MetaSounds yet, but it's a good thing to check out for just learning sort of UE the audio. Feature set. Yeah, yeah MetaSounds, I want to emphasize. Is, we have two. Yes, uh, I want to emphasize that MetaSounds, this is the thing that is starting to confuse people because we're getting a lot of new interest in our tech. MetaSounds is a feature set within the larger, broader context of the Unreal Engine. So MetaSounds is source generation. But spatialization, reverb, all the all those things that you heard in Lyra, that's it, Lyra is a really good project to check out. It's just using a lot of our features, almost all of them, uh, to good effect. Yeah. Um, right. So, could you give uh, could you give a brief in next five minutes, Dan, overview of how procedural sound works? <laughs> I think it's a little bit too heavy. Oh, uh, <laughs> dang! You know what? I have a slide on this uh, for another presentation. <laughs> <laughs> I think a quick a quick summary is procedural audio is analogous to what you would you wouldn't even think about it in, in graphics, but if you generate a VFX that's being created by the engine on the fly, it's not something that you've imported and like a like a model that you've made in an outside project and imported and you say that's my model. That's not procedural, although the tool may have generated the model procedurally. It's just rendering some asset. Procedural content is content made in the moment on the fly, and so. Just like in graphics, how you might import a texture for a VFX system, that texture is modified and you know generated. I would consider that still to be procedural. Audio is has been procedural for decades, where it's like I import a sound wave and I randomize it. You know that's still technically procedural, but we're on the continuum trying to push audio to be more like graphics in terms of generating content on the fly, making it interactive, making it dynamic making it customizable and that kind of a thing. So that's what we mean by procedural audio. So I, I found my slide there. Uh, <laughs> this was from GameSoundCon 2018. <laughs> when I was talking about procedural UI generation. And when I talk about procedural, um, so I quote uh, Farnell, who's oftentimes quoted when we talk about procedural audio. Procedural yeah. audio is nonlinear, often synthetic, often synthetic, not always, yes. created in real time according to a set of programmatic rules and live input. So procedural audio That's basically be best, what I said, but better. Yeah, <laughs> best thought of as an extension of the design process rather than a replacement for it. As a designer, you already create rules which dictate your design process in order to achieve or adhere to a cohesive aesthetic vision. Designing procedural audio is about codifying those rules in a way that allows a real-time system to produce your design. A procedural design may more robustly handle a broader variety of input. It doesn't always have to. I think a lot of the idea for procedural uh, is emergence. Um, you know, video. The exciting thing about working in video games is that like things can happen that weren't necessarily even part of your original vision. Yeah. 
and that's a big exciting part of uh games working on games is sort of systems and interactivity and and emergence right. and watching people have fun playing with your toys you know I you know, if you, you want to, <laughs> I thought you were joking about the slide, but it's real. No, I, I, oh no, I have a whole. This is a whole talk about subtractive synthesis and procedural audio and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, like I said, we're we would say yes to any live stream you get. We got endless stuff to present. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh... By the way, uh, the Matrix Awakens uh, and the City Sample demo is a great example of procedural design across all disciplines. The city itself was procedurally generated. And so it, a set of rules were built yeah. uh, with, you know, with input from, uh, from, uh, you know, graphics people, modelers, uh, everyone sort of feeding into this system to sort of spit out a, a full city that actually logically makes sense, you know. So that's a good one to look at if you want to sort of explore procedural design. All right, so some f roadmap type questions. Are there plans to add a granular synth module to Metasounds? Mm, indeed, there are. <laughs> uh, I actually just checked in a grain delay node uh, in 5.1. I, I was thinking Ooh. about doing a tutorial or show people about it because it's kind of an interesting use case. So grain delay is technically granular synth, but it's not uh, off of a wavetable. Um, but I would like to do something like that as well. I'm a huge fan of granular synthesis. Uh, I'll just add as a product manager, it's so fun working with Aaron because we'll get requests or I'll say, hey, Aaron, I think we should add this thing. And it's like magic. It just shows up like the rate at which we're doing things is incredible here. So she actually, an example. should we have a Metasound Slack channel? She's like, hey, uh, some of our licensees have been asking. It's a common request to do pitch shifting uh, without changing the timing. And I was like, oh, well, that's interesting. And I like literally right afterwards, I was like, here's a tutorial on how to do it. I'm checking it in right now. And she was like, how did that happen? I was just, it's coincidence. That doesn't always happen, but it just happened yeah. to be was... coincidentally something I was just working on. It was yeah. a fun thing I wanted to do. It's not, it wasn't, anyways. Uh, all right. So, uh, Meta Sounds Oscilloscope and Metering. So, uh, we're trying hard to get some cool stuff in 5.1 for that. Uh, we have the architecture in place for probing uh, Meta Sound node connections which we're using for visualization. We've got that uh, checked in uh, to 5.1 if you want to check. It's like disabled by default. But uh, if you have 5.1, which is UE5 main, you can always sync to it if you've got the code. Um, and uh, you can, if shape noise, who asks this, uh, feel free to check it out and give us some feedback. Um, but we definitely want to have in-graph visualization, oscilloscopes, spectral analysis, all that kind of stuff, which would then, of course, feed the larger effort that we have for that we're pushing for uh, better tools in UE audio for, for profiling and metering and that kind of a thing. It's, it's a common request. Are reroute nodes on the roadmap? Yes, they are, sound effects guy. Uh, that, that's his name, by the way, the sound effects guy. <laughs> uh, skewmorphic elements would be nice if we had a panel like the audio levels that had all the dial inputs grouped into one spot for real-time adjustment. All right, so we do have uh, some stuff. I don't know if we're going to get to it for 5.1, probably not. But there's some idea of creating a kind of light uh, WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get kind of interface editor. If you're familiar with Max MSP, it would be sort of inspired by their like uh, uh, presentation, presentation mode. mode. So the idea is that like, and it wouldn't be full on UMG custom interface. It'd be like somewhere in between those. So you'd build your MetaSound graph. We've got these cool knobs and sliders and things. And then the idea would be, you could say, right click add to like preset view is probably what we would call it. And then the idea is when you load up a preset, you'd be able to organize and position those things independently. So then you could create your own sort of skeuomorphic interface. And then, then the idea is also to support UMG for that. So if you wanted to go crazy and make a totally insane interface that groups things together, cust import your own textures and make it look like a VST thing if you want. We could always display a UMG widget that would drive that. Um, and so we, I totally can see a market of, you know, UE marketplace type stuff where people are like, yeah, get my MetaSound pack. And it's like ridiculous interfaces. That'd be a really cool thing to support in the future. So that's definitely on the on the roadmap. Uh, to do uh, another nice thing would be some sort of C++, C++ interface that we can write our own modules. That exists. <laughs> I wrote a tutorial. Check it out. Uh, it's uh, I forget what I called it, but it's basically a very, very detailed, in-depth thing about uh, how to build a the pitch shift node. That's what we talked about earlier. 
Anna's also posted, I linked to it in mine, that's a more Hello World. So it's sort of like the very bare minimum to get going on a meta sound node. Mine is absolutely not Hello World. It's like deep dive, you learn about DSP. You know? It's like a non-trivial node. So you got both of those as things you can check out in terms of how to build your own nodes in C++. Um, and any UE plugin can extend the meta sound plugin. So again, marketplace options. So if you're out there as a, a plugin developer, um, absolutely check out our API, check out how to make a UE plugin, and then you could totally post your stuff, your extensions in the marketplace. Um, plans to have some relationship like a plugin or API to connect DAWs to Metasounds and export runtime samples or use DAW VSTs inside Unreal. So uh, we'll probably never support VSTs directly because there's licensing issues with VST, but the idea of an open source plugin API, there's some things going on that I'm really excited about. I might as well mention it is there's this API called Clap. I recommend checking it out if you're interested. It's basically trying to solve this problem in a way that will work, uh, that's not owned by any particular platform and is a multi, multi platform, open source, totally free standard plugin API that would theoretically work in any VST. And I would like to push for support in Unreal Engine on that. Uh, we haven't made concrete plans on exactly when that would be, probably not. We we'll probably wouldn't be able to begin looking at that for another six months or so, but that would be really awesome to support. So, you, so a plugin maker could make their plugins for a VS, for a DAW and then just have it work inside an engine without any friction or overhead. Like import my imagine if it was VST, import VST into the editor, boom, play it, boom, done, and nobody has to be in the in the way in between that. That would be awesome, but it probably won't be VST. Uh, and also connections with DAWs. We have this thing that we are working on. I guess we can talk about it. It's uh, called AudioLink. Um, AudioLink is a plugin that uh, we're pushing to have it available in 5.1 that will essentially allow us to connect to third parties. Uh, so other middleware and or uh, uh, DAWs. So you get your audio from those systems into the edit engine and, and uh, uh, backwards. Yeah. Uh, the particular thing exciting in this is sequencer support and integration with digital audio workstations with sequencer. Um, plans, okay, so are you, uh, Microsoft Project Acoustics and Steam Audio exist, but do you have any future plans to add dynamic versions of those as built-in features to Metasounds? So those two solutions are extremely extensive. As I said, we had a whole thing with Project Acoustics uh, last time we were on here. So check it out if you want to deep dive on that. But I would say that thing to add that's relevant here is the interfaces that we mentioned earlier. We would like to make a sort of acoustics interface that something like Project Acoustics could feed into it. So you could have access to acoustical data inside your medicines. We haven't done that yet, but that's something that we want to do. And Project Acoustics would be something that would implement that. Sorry, I'm answering all these. I'm just trying to get cover it quickly. I can answer them fast. Uh, all right, uh, let's see. General audio, let's, there's so many questions. Uh, let's get some Lyra questions in here. Will we Lyra. get release notes? Lyra, sorry, I knew I was going to say Lyra. <laughs> so not the Italian currency. Will we get release <laughs> notes as Lyra is updated? I've noticed at least once the Epic Launcher said that an update was available, but I couldn't find those. I guess the technical question about Lyra. I don't know. It's probably a boring question. <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, it is a good question. I don't, I don't know where there were people to answer release it. Release people. Yeah. Uh, and then how much are we allowed to rip off from Lyra? The whole thing? It's a, It's... So it's basically you should be able to take Lyra and then build your game on top of it. I mean, if you shipped a game on the into the Steam, you know, Lyra store, and it was called Lyra, and it was just literally a straight copy. I think that might be a problem. It was called it was called Ryla. <laughs> Ryla. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There might be an issue with that, but I definitely know. Like shooter game. Exe hilariously like so many games were shipped yeah. in ue4 triple a and games triple a games <laughs> and you get the crash report they didn't even name the it's like shooter game so like yep. it, you know so that was okay with shooter game lyra was built with the intention of being a starting point for games so absolutely copy paste it and then start building well, your game on top it. of it rename. i would recommend renaming the executable <laughs> don't make it super obvious you know but i don't think there's an issue uh, with that uh Probably irrelevant. What program? Uh, let's see. Uh, this, this is a section called probably. Irrelevant. What program are you using for music view? Uh, maybe some general questions for for people who are new to game audio. I think this is a kind of good area to go. Like, what are what are recommended 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 tools? Wow. <laughs> uh, 
uh, or uh, other things to just sort of general, how would you get started in, in this field if you wanted to get into it, I guess. It's one o'clock, so maybe that's not a good time to ask that question. <laughs> but it's, it's a category. It's, it's it's definitely one of those like like people have written books about this. Yes. Um, so it's it's definitely <laughs> one of those that could be very long answers or very short glib answers. The short glib answer is you just gotta try. Just yeah. prepare to be less than great and just keep, yeah. And if you enjoy it, just keep doing it, and you'll you'll get better slowly. Yeah, I would say fear fearlessness is key. Sort of yeah, just jump in there. Don't be afraid to sound bad or make mistakes. Just <laughs> just go in there. Just make stuff. Just be a doer and not a not a not doer. Just, it sounds over simple because it mean, is. But that's that, <laughs> that's also that, actually also my advice for learning how to use meta sounds. Yeah. Just go just in there trying and explore to make and yeah. try stuff and connect things. And if you make yeah. a mistake, then it's, you're the only one that knows about it. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Back to the question about safety, though, you might want to, uh, you know, if you're not really sure what you're doing, you might want to push play and then slowly put your headphones on. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah like, or like what I do is Isn't I put my volume volumes? all the way down and then I slowly. Yeah, yeah, yeah that too. <laughs> Uh, all right, I think that's that's a pretty de decent cover. We didn't answer all the questions, but uh, Tina, what's your advice here? Um, I think you got quite a majority of them. I'm very interested in you being able to talk about the special secret <laughs> that you were wanting oh, to talk about. Oh, that's right. Totally forgot to. Totally forgot. Thank you. <laughs> oh, okay. So I was the one that was good. So we. Oh, and there pushing... was a good segue, too. You want to <laughs> learn about game audio. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I totally yeah. missed it. So if you are an up and comer and you're interested in getting to know more about game audio, uh, we are sponsoring Game SoundCon this year. We've, we're very excited about it. We are a, I forget the level, but we're a very high level sponsor. We, so we're we need our own level. We're epic we're, level sponsors. We're the epic level. Nice. <laughs> so Brian uh, Schmidt and uh, Grace and I have been working. So we're very happy to announce it. Uh, we are going to be having two days of talks in a dedicated room uh, where we're putting together that schedule now, but there'll be lots of opportunities for ha hands-on uh, and sort of FaceTime and questions and Q&A and do a lot of training and education. It'll be like a mini GDC slash, I don't know, we're working on the plans for it now. And hopefully we'll we'll get some people interested in giving some talks that have a lot of hands-on experience. Yeah. Rich uh, is invited to be a speaker there if he's available. Um, so this is a Game SoundCon, uh, which is, it's a October, what's the date again? October, October 25th and 26th. Yeah, October 25th and 26th. GameSoundCon.com. Yes, thank you. <laughs> and you know what? It's it's great. Every you know, I try to go every time I can. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, it's it's just really great. It's a good conference. Yeah, it's a great conference. Uh, I think we've all been speakers there. Rich, you were uh, on there as a speaker a couple times, right? Uh, I was a speaker mm -hmm. there. Dan was a speaker. You get really a lot of different people from different perspectives. I think it's probably the best game audio conference outside of GDC. Maybe even, I'm, frankly, it's better than GDC for game audio. I like it better than GDC. I think so. Yeah. Um, so it's, it, but it's, it's not huge. So you still get a lot of intimate, like, you know, FaceTime with people in the industry. So it's a good opportunity if you're already in the street to connect and make connections with other people doing similar things. It's a great conference. So we're very excited to sponsor it. Um, I'm excited that Epic is, uh, trying to, uh, support our efforts to get more involved in the game audio community. Um, and so there you go. That was our, if you were here last time, that was the thing that we were alluding to uh, in our last uh, stream. We couldn't quite officially announce it, but we have been given approval that we can announce it. Perfect. I have also been a speaker there several times every year, actually. Yeah, Tina is um, one of the, uh, yeah, she's an <laughs> expert. <laughs> yeah, I know everything about audio, obviously, if you um, couldn't yes. tell. <laughs> I mean, you're welcome to, to join us, Tina, if you want. I don't know. It's that we there it, there might be other conflicts, but you're absolutely welcome to join us. I think it'd be cool for you to maybe have some FaceTime with the audio community. Oh, I'd love to. <laughs> I'd love to. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I firstly want to thank all of you so much for taking the time to come on the show today. 
um, especially Dan and Rich. Thank you both so much for coming. And then of course, Aaron and Grace, thank you both so much for coming back. <laughs> I It was really awesome of all of you to be able to come on here and talk more about this in particular. I know that everyone has been dying to learn more information about Metasounds and this was just incredible. There was a little bit of absolutely everything in here. So there should be at least an answer to most of what you needed to know about. And if not, at least a good starting point of where to go from, from here. But seriously, I can't thank you enough all for coming on here and talking about this. And also, thank you everybody who came to watch. It, again, is really, really awkward if we were to do this and nobody would be here and no questions are being asked. I'm sure we could just riff between us, but the, <laughs> a big part of it yeah. is the community involvement. So thank you so much for also being here and being involved. Um, and then of course, if you liked this stream, we did have another one on similar topics two weeks ago. So make sure you go watch that one if you haven't already. It was mentioned a couple times, but there's some really great information in that one included. I think these two streams together are really kind of a great crash course for getting you started on some stuff and also in giving you some really good resources and being able to learn more and spread your wings. <laughs> we release you to become the audio god of your dreams. <laughs> <laughs> wow, those are those are <laughs> big promises here. Yeah, there's okay? a big promise there. I don't know if <laughs> deity becoming tough, a deity tough is cookies if you missed the stream, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, if you missed it, well, Tough. I guess you could watch the VOD, I suppose. There is that. <laughs> I'll be a demigod. <laughs> yes, yeah. A... Dem we, can, we can deal with demigod. Yeah. <laughs> but um, you can watch all of our streams in video format, both on Twitch and YouTube at Unreal Engine. And don't forget to keep up with us at Unreal Engine on all of our social media, or come say hi in our forums where you can get the latest news and also find all links associated with today's stream, which there are a ton of them. So I promise you, I will be updating that announcement so you can find all the goodies right there in one little place. But that's everything. Thank you all so much. Seriously. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> and you all have a great day and I'll see you next week.